four o'clock. Okay, um, it's four o'clock, so we will start the town council budget workshop. I have just pulled the agenda up here for all of us to see. Today is Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. This is a 4 p.m. workshop on um, the FY 2021 budget. Um, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Those present, I think I can look in my gallery view and see that we are all here. So it's, I will count that as acceptable. Um, I'm just gonna read through the budget, uh, the agenda to get us all situated on where we're going and we'll take it from there. Um, first item is a progress update on the finance committee budget review process. Second one is an adjustment to the use of fund balance. Uh, Tom will lead us through that. Third one is establish a final tax rate target. And a fourth one is to establish an updated town and school budget expectations. And this workshop I believe is born out of um, the fact that we've been circling the drain so to speak for several weeks and we haven't got together as a body to be able to discuss um, where we are individually and then hopefully collectively as a body. The, I purposely, Pretty much every member of the BOE Finance Committee and Administration is in the audience. Uh, Sarah Layton and I talked and we thought that it would be best. I'll present the school side of what we have. Um, of course, that they're available for questions. Um, I just wanted to try to keep this workshop um, focused on us as a body and where we are as the budget. So the reason why there's no BOE members here is simply um, because of that, um, but they are more than one welcome, willing, and able to be promoted to a panelist and answer any questions. Um, but I just, I didn't, I wanted to try to avoid this turning into a two hour Q and A session. I, I really feel like the seven of us haven't even really talked to each other about this. So I, I, I wanted to make sure we had ample time to do so. Um, so with that uh, agenda item number one, I don't know if Tom or Peter want to tee off agenda item number one. I'll leave it to either one of you gentlemen, so. Well, Peter, you and I have not talked. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I'm pleased to let uh, let you go. I, I was prepared to to take the full council through uh, kind of that's the, great. the pending items, if that if that's helpful. Okay, that's great. Go ahead. All right. The the council, in its uh, ongoing review of the budget, uh, they are meeting every Tuesday. Um, actually, at this time. Um, and last Tuesday, I presented a, a list of uh, further recommended recommended adjustments. The Finance Committee took no action, uh, but what I'd like to do is uh, provide an update to the full council regarding those. And even since then, there have been a couple of additional changes uh, that I'd like to walk through. So, Paul, if you could pull up that, share the screen and pull up that first slide. Yep. And, and Tom, can I do, jump in just for a second? When you, said, you know, sort of just for the public, part of our process as a Finance Committee, we've been going through the budget. We've been having conversations. You Usually we don't make recommendations. Usually we don't make recommendations. Usually we don't make recommendations.
review process of all the different departments and all the municipal numbers. So it's not that we didn't appreciate bringing forward. It's just a matter of our last meeting will be to go through the budget. Yeah, I, I beg your pardon. Certainly correct. A pretty mature list at this point it's happening across our country. We had really think it's something that we need to double and I think huge impact, certainly given the times. So that's an actually add in for appropriations. Um, we have been carrying right along full-time cost of living increases. And I, I simply failed to bring along the part-time component associated with that just to, for, for equity. And so there's a $45,000 reduction associated with that. Um, and then the final adjustment on the appropriation side that's changed since last week, uh, we, though we had removed the expected revenue, and this would be support from the school department uh, for a reduction of one IT staff member, uh, we didn't remove the expense. Uh, so essentially those two wash each other out, but uh, I think it's important to carry that along. Um, it may interest the members of council on the revenue side. Uh, last week, I did bring forward some further adjustments on excise tax. So that's going down by $150,000. Um, I'm pleased to report we continue to do very well. Uh, again, we're open to the public three days a week and there has been brisk activity. Yesterday was a little less, but I can tell you there was uh, there was always someone in line. Uh, it just wasn't uh, spilling out into the council chambers. So um, we, we're confident we'll meet budget, if not exceed budget, um, uh, in that regard. And then also last week, we're able to bring forward uh, with a, a fair degree of clarity um, reductions for community services based on program decisions we've made, and really those centered around uh, deciding not to do summer camp this summer. Uh, canceling Summerfest and senior programming through at least the summer months till September. So we considered the effects on, um, on both expenditure and more importantly, uh, effects on revenue. And the, the net loss, if you will, would be 188,000 and we've, uh, we've brought that number forward. The final piece uh, I recommend we change. Uh, I had been carrying about six $730,000 in fund balance and I've represented that this money uh, would be monies um, um, represented in the current FY20 budget. Uh, you know, I, I recommended these in late April and we've had some experience and made some decisions uh, since then that have affected this number. So just the community services decisions alone uh, is about $200,000 that I, I think we need to lower our sights on. And then we've, we continue to have some legal expense uh, in spite of our best efforts. And there's a impending abatement that I'll bring to the council uh, at your next meeting for your consideration. So all, all things considered, I think we ought to lower our sights considerably and down to a, a $400,000 use of fund balance or otherwise a, a reduction in expected use of fund balance of 331. So the net effect of all of those uh, additions and subtractions uh, and I think it's quite comprehensive at this point, is about $190,000 further downward adjustment to the budget. Um, this is Peter, can you just, can you uh, just be clear, the use of fund balance really isn't the fund balance we've carried over from prior years. This is what you think you've generated in this calendar year from some of the curtailment activities and other things, is that, so it's not like we're dipping into fund balance. That's my expectation. Yes, uh, this has been. This is always a challenge to estimate. This is particularly challenging this year to estimate. So, uh, but yes, you've characterized it correctly. And, and I think that's an important distinction. This this is savings you realize from budget by looking at the expense lines and some things breaking our way. It's not dipping into reserves of prior years. That's the expectation. Yes. Yep. Uh, and then beyond that, if you flip to the next screen, though, uh, I really. Um, reticent to, to even review these, but in the, in the uh, vein of, of modeling, I had produced a series of uh, tiers, if you will, uh, to follow the lead of the school. Um, 
and, and these do not come with my recommendation, but these are further areas of adjustment that I guess could be considered uh, if the council feels it necessary. Um, so the work I've done tonight uh, does not include these items. It, uh, it, it models uh, those items that either have been adopted by the council in first reading and those items that I've just reviewed as my recommendations. So uh, perhaps I'll stop there and I'm pleased to answer questions of council to make sure people have a, an understanding and appreciation for kind of that level of effort. Tom, before we do that, can we go to since since we just recapped your efforts and that's a snapshot of where we are, if we couple that with what we had at first reading for the school, can we just go to the tax computation that's just about uh, where we are separate of the COVID issue, but with what you just offered up? Yes, yeah, um, so just scroll down the first tax rate sheet, yep. this one right here. Uh, this models what I just reviewed, those recommended items plus what was done in first reading. In addition, it does fold in the items that the school has provided uh, to the council last evening. We've, we've folded those items in. I've had, uh, I asked uh, for some clarification, but had no involvement in modifying that. So I was just interested in uh, reflecting what that looks like kind of this point in time. So you'll see the municipal uh, budget on a net basis is down six uh, tenths of a percent. The school is up uh, 1.8%. And as Paul is showing at the bottom, uh, it models uh, at the mid range, a tax rate increase of Okay, so I think I'll just I think I'll pause there for a moment and uh, take any questions for Tom or any discussion on the town side update. Council Hamill. Yeah, I would, I'd like to work right to left here. I mean, that's a lot to reconcile. So Tom, can you go back? Can you put that last one up again? I'm trying to figure out where we were last. I recall a number of 1.56. Uh, that was the mid range number of the last one that that we we're working with. Is that? Uh, no, last, uh, you know, I, I produced one last week and things have changed, but that one was at 1.02% as okay. of last week. Um, you may be recalling at first reading, yeah. uh, you were you were closer to that 156. That, that number sounds familiar. So, and, that, and just bear with me for a minute because what we're trying, I'm trying to do in my own small mind here is to track, you know, the, the the journey of the various versions here. And I realized we were going to go up and down, but so we're 1.56 as a mid range mill rate estimated budget for the town, all in Muni and school. We dropped to one point, what was it again? Zero two. 1.02. And now we're back up to 1.16. Just appreciate that each of those points in time, uh, we're not necessarily 
considering all the relevant information. Right. For instance, last week, I did not have any information from the school. So I was simply carrying forward what you did in first reading. Okay. And then similarly tonight, uh, I'm including some, some fairly drastic downward adjustments in revenue and that has an obvious effect. So uh, each of these, uh, you know, needs to be considered for what it's uh, factoring in. And if I may, Paul, just a two quick follow-up question. So Tom, the number I was stuck in my head was 430K was the last one I saw in terms of uh, uh, reductions. And now we're looking at 830K. So do I have that right? That it's another 400K that we found roughly? I'm sorry, Mr. Hamill, I, I don't follow your question. So the last number I saw on Wednesday, uh, we are looking at something like $430,000 in terms of reductions. Uh, and now can you help me get from that number uh, to 830 on your second slide here, your second next page down? Yeah, this second slide has not changed at all from the last time, um, from last, last Tuesday anyhow, I can say that for certain. Um, the first slide has changed uh, in the areas that I've shown in the beige color. And just for clarity, Tom, this second slide is not in that mill rate calculation whatsoever. Not at all, no, no. So Tom, the only thing I'd say is can we somehow, can we fish up, you know, fish out that 430 slide? I mean, cause I'm, you know, what I'm really struggling with here is I'm, you know, I'm a reasonably close follower of these numbers. I, I'm really struggling with trying to follow you know, even the, the top line, you know, lead in here. So, you know, is that a figure, is that a slide you could show us somehow the 430? And I realize this is just, we're not committing to it, but it would be sort of like, you know, uh, another bridge here for us. Yeah, I, I beg your pardon. The number 430 does not resonate with me. Um, well, other members of finance, does, does that ring a bell with you? Isn't that what you're going to carry forward from fund balance? Um, no, it was 730, 730 and now I'm proposing 400. We were going to carry forward from fund balance. Okay. So it reduced 430. Okay. But Tom, was there any chance, was that the amount of new adjustments net? I, I did have a question as well, Tom. The Next to the community services adjustments. Yes. Tom, I just, just a point of order here. My question's not been answered yet, and we're moving over to John Kluge here asking questions. Can you help me? You know, no missing slide that I have in my mind, and maybe there was no such slide, but I'm, I'm having a hard time following the path here. Tom, was that, was that potentially, you brought forth some new adjustments last time we met? Was that the amount, the new adjustments that you added to the table? Because you brought, because at one point, your budget was down about 5%. Last finance committee meeting, you brought numbers, so you brought some additional things to the table. I don't know if that's what Don's thinking about. Well, I think the big difference is I've I've downward uh, adjusted the fund balance, and uh, that's three hundred thirty thousand dollar downward pressure from last week. So I just I just want to leave, leave this question, okay? And I'm not expecting you to answer it, but this is where I'm having difficulty. We're jumping from a from a new funding slide to uh, a new uh, not to be touched additional reduction slide. And the last slide we saw was something that I recall was in the same colors, it was in yellow. It was uh, somewhere between 380 and $430,000 that we had identified on the town side in terms of reduction. So I'm, I'm just having a, you know, a little bit of a roadmap problem here. Well, all I can say, Councilor Hamill and I will do my best to, to try to source that out for you. But the first slide that, uh, that we've showed, um, is exactly as it was a week ago, except for the items that are, sh are shaded. Okay. Those are updates uh, over the course of the week. Okay, great, thank you. And again, just for clarity, the Don, the ones that the second slide quote, not to be touched, that's from the 0% exercise. So they, those are just, those just keep getting brought forward. Right. But the second slide is just from the 0% exercise. And I, so, is that 430, Tom? I can't quite It's 421. Okay. Might that be the number? That's it, Tom. That's the one. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, so, so the, the, the difference is uh, the changes that I've uh, proposed, and we can pull that slide back up again in the beige 
and most importantly, the reduction in use of fund balance uh, makes that 421 now 189099. Okay. Okay. So, so can I, if I try to net this out, does that mean that we are taking, we're funding less from the fund balance, but our, our net reductions in costs are 200,000, not 400,000, not 800,000. That, that's correct. The net reduction is reduced because of the uh, reduction in use of fund balance, correct. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Paul. Okay. John Clucci, thanks. Thank you. John, you're on mute, but if you want to unmute and ask your question. Yeah, no, my question was just related to uh, the community services line items. There, there's a note that says see details, but- uh, Yeah, I'll, I them. beg your pardon. I, I had that available. We, I think, looked at it quickly at the finance committee last week. I'm pleased to share it. Uh, there's an associated spreadsheet that, uh, that I draw from. So I'll, okay. I'll be sure to share that around. Tom, and just because we have a large audience watching us today. So I, I'm, I'm asking questions that I think I know the answer to, but I'm trying, I am trying to make this easier for the public to follow. About a week ago, we were at 1.02%, but since then what has moved is we canceled summer camp. So we've lost some significant revenue on that side. And you've also adjusted down what we're carrying forward as fund balance. So that 1.02 is now, I believe one point, was it 1.19? Uh, I know there was a couple other things in beige that we had, but that there, that's the difference from last week's one, we were right at one, if I recall correctly, percent, mm -hmm. and now we're at 1.2. Yeah, and again, the other difference is last week, I was uh, doing nothing on the school side. All of the changes were directed by my proposals on the town side. What we've just looked at tonight considers both those factors together. Perfect, thank you. Councilor Geistein? Um, yeah, so I, I guess you have, lumped in the TIFs, the CEAs, the Homestead, and the BETA. Is that right? All in one, all in one line? We were asked to simplify the form, but I assure you all of the detail still exists. We just truncated a couple of those lines to make it easier to read. So yeah, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Um, so on well, you can speak to the chairman if, about that. If we have to pay, okay, well, I will indeed. Um, it needs to be broken out. Um, I can speak to the chair about quite a bit. It's quite confusing. Um, so TIFs and CEA, the TIF was, we're gonna owe about 1.271. I mean, the CEA, we're gonna owe to the developers 1.271 million. Um, the TIF was 179. Um, and so even with those, then we're saying we're, we're expecting a 22% increase in revenue um, from, I guess, just taking into account the homestead exemption. Is that what we're saying here? And the BETE. So the homestead exemption was up 51%. And the uh, BETA was only up, you know, it's pretty much even. And we were going to owe the um, credit enhancement. TIF was up 33%. And the um, tax increase was up 46% before this. Um, so we're saying that's kind of be a 22% um, increase based on what the state's going to give us. Is that correct? Again, that's, a, that's, that's considering four different broken out line items and I'm pleased to provide you that, that detail. It sounds like you'd like to see I'm, it. I'm sure the detail's in here because it hasn't changed, right? From April 29th, um, that's the one I'm looking at. That should be no different. These factors are changed slightly depending on the final mill rate, uh, but I suspect they have not changed uh, in that period, no. So then we're expecting to get 11.7% more in state municipal revenue sharing. And did we adjust the overlay at all? We've lumped all that together now too. Did we adjust the overlay from 200,000? I have not, no. Okay. And so right now the school is up as of the, the reading on uh, the first read, the school was up, I believe it was, the operating for the school was up by 
3.1%. The school is now up 3.3% from the May 6th reading, not including the COVID. I'm looking at that. And so the dollar amount difference, um, when I did that dollar amount difference, it's something like, oh, you bear with me here. Um, we do all this stuff on the fly, so it makes it really hard to, to run any kind of numbers. But the original school number was 5306073 as of May 6th. So if I take 53, 132, 172, if I did it right, minus 53068, I think that's 073. So there's an additional 64,000 in what the school is requesting um, from May um, from May 8th. Um, and I guess it's a lot higher because the May 8th budget included some increase for the nursing services, which I guess has been all pulled back out. Is that, um, is that, is that the understanding of, of where we're at with that? Uh, uh, Counselor, your question is extremely complicated. Uh, it, it, I think it may be best for us to go through the school slides. Uh, some of those answers are are there, and I'm not trying to be evasive, but the, the changes affect operating budget, capital budget uh, for school. And so, yes, your, your answer is correct. I think the exact number is $64,099 is the difference on the operating side. But then there's a, a, a more notable change on the capital side that they're suggesting. Okay, but I think the May 8th operating side included more nurses. And as I understand, that's been pulled out into the COVID number. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, but, yep. yeah, I, I think that's an accurate statement. Yep. So they're, they're, since second read, their operating budget has gone up by how much? That's, that's what I'm, I mean, since first read, that's what I'm, I'm trying to find out. It's gone so up by the COVID package separately, which is, I, you know, I think is, is good to do. How much did their operating budget go up sixty four thousand ninety nine dollars yeah but i don't think you can say that because the original fifty three oh six eight included more money for nurses I, it does i thought you just said leave COVID out but yes that's that's essentially how they were able to do it that they removed four hundred and thirty thousand oh, okay, yeah. dollars in COVID gotcha. expenses yeah okay so yeah. they've increased by sixty four thousand since first read and then another um, half million are they asking for? Five hundred fifty-six thousand for for COVID. And I did have another question on that. And I don't know if you've heard this, Tom. I'm not putting you on the spot, but at the original part of their budget, there was 114k, if I remember. That might not have been right number, but there was a little bit of COVID relief money that was coming through. I believe that was built into May 8th um, numbers. Um, and had to do with where we stood on Title I or something like that. I'm sorry, I didn't totally follow it. I don't have the number in front of me, but is that, is the 556 reduced by that number or it, is it? Um, it, it, it you know, I, I, I will gladly have Kate Bolton come ask these questions. I think, because I, I, I believe your questions are for Kate Bolton more than Tom. Do you, would you say that's accurate? Um, on that, I was just, because you brought up the mill rate sheet, I was trying to figure out the mill rate, but I guess my question is for Tom is, you know, at the last FinCom, we talked about using some beach reserve money. Is that off the table? No, I, there's $30,000 in beach reserves to offset uh, beach enforcement. Okay, so how does that jive with the, um, the beach reserve officer 33 in your tier one not recommended? I thought that that was going to be a break even between revenue and the beach reserve. It is, but we're looking to bring in additional resources to, to further offset expense. So that would be someone different, another one. And so what's the tier one cut then? I guess I don't understand. That's not recommended. I thought they had the same coverage that they have now based on what we did. No. No, my proposal was to actually prov continue providing enhanced coverage at Higgins Beach, and that's the extra $33,500. And we've actually implemented that plan. Staff is working as we speak. Uh, in addition, I propose that we bring in $30,000 of beach reserves to offset all expenses, not necessarily Higgins Beach related. So I'm sorry, is that in the mill rate or it's not in the mill rate? That's what I, I don't yes. understand. 
Yes, everything that I've presented on my page has been included in the mill rate calculation. Oh, in the tier one. Okay. No. Um, that's what I no. Only on the first page, those recommended items, tiers one, two, and three. I beg your pardon. I thought I'd been very clear that I don't don't recommend those, and therefore they are not included in any of my modeling. Right. So who is this beach reserve officer then? And then what about the offsetting? Is this additional coverage than more coverage than normal? Or I guess I'm not following. In tier one, you're saying you don't recommend that we cut a beach reserve officer, but I thought you just said that we we're putting in the offsetting. You know, why, why is this even on the list, I guess? Because I thought that was a break even. We were keeping the coverage the same, taking 30,000 from the beach reserve. Because it's an option for you if you wish to, to go there. I, I don't recommend it for the very reason you say, that it, it uh, covers itself between uh, meter revenue and fines. Well, uh, if I could add something to- But you're I, saying I, the beach reserve number is already in the revenues? Yes, counselor. So I thought the beach reserve revenue that we were taking was to cover this 33,500 in tier one. So this is, that was just, oh. an, so that was just an amount to, to just reduce the budget, the 30,000 from the beach reserve. And, and we are doing that this year in the current year. I believe it was Councilor Hayes that pointed out and asked the question why we aren't including beach reserves uh, in this, FY21 budget. I think it's also important to realize that the, again, the second page, which is the not recommended, which I don't think we've actually discussed too much about anyways, th that was that was created before this Higgins Beach solution was even, was even considered and suggested by Tom. So we're looking at something that was produced about a month ago, actually, whenever we met for our 0% workshop that was produced and has yet has not been changed because we haven't really dipped our toe into that, so to speak. So I think that's, so the series of events that are referencing has happened after that was created as well. So where was the per diem time that was originally called, I guess, mistakenly the um, Pleasant Hill Fire Station? Where's that? It's included in a fourth, third item under appropriations on that front page. Yeah, and pardon me for not seeing it. And when you get stuff like five minutes before and you're trying to finish up a work meeting, you know, it's impossible to review anything. So it's great that we all have to look stupid going through stuff real time, but that's that's the world we live in right now. So Betsy, would you like to suggest that we adjourn the meeting and meet at a later? Yes, I would. I okay. absolutely would. Fair enough. Are, is, is there any temperature to adjourn the meeting and meet at a later date? I am a hard no. And Don? I have a question. No, not not yet. Would we like to adjourn the meeting? I'm a no. Mr. Johnson? Okay, so four of us are a no. We've settled that issue. Let's move on. Are there any other questions for Tom? Mr. Hayes? Yeah, it, it wasn't a question for Tom. It was just Paul just kind of wanted to add a little bit of color to what you said. I think, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong. I think some of that budget zero exercise, Tom, you did bring forth some additional recommendations, which we did adopt. These are the ones that you said to us, you were meeting the spirit of the charge, but you said everything else you begrudgingly recommended, but these are ones where you said, if there's any way you'd really recommend not doing them. So that's why they're on sort of this list. So Paul, I just wanted to clarify, we did some of that exercise yeah, yeah, some of yeah. The things Tom did. I think you found. I think that was what Don was referencing. You found a couple additional hundred thousand dollars or something, didn't you, Tom? In that exercise. Yeah, in, in all likelihood, I, I I probably shouldn't include this at this point. Uh, it might be a distraction. I, I guess I was including it because the work was done, and I wanted mm -hmm. to know that uh, you know, the spirit of the request has been met. Uh, but you, yeah. you're correct. You characterized it perfectly. And, and I think, and and I just want to commend. I mean, Tom. I know Tom has jumped through hoops in the staff and it's been incredibly stressful. We've seen some of that stress. Um, I, I do want to thank that effort, Tom. You've given us all the tools. We just need to put the tools to use, which I think is the purpose of tonight, to say we've got all the tools in front of us. Now we need to kind of give some guidance on you've done what we've asked you to do. Mm -hmm. Now we need to do what we need to do. Okay, thank you. Councilor Hamill? 
Yeah, I just on that point, I, I just want to, and I know we'll, we'll talk about this later as we go through, and I, and, and I want it to be too much about process, but there, there needs to be time for us to, to digest this stuff and for, even for us to confirm what version we're dealing with and how we got here. Okay, so you know most of the discussion we've had so far is to that point. So I, I we're trying to what we're simply asking for is context and a way to try to understand where we are in in this journey. Um, so I, you know, it's an appeal. This is not, uh, you know, uh, an angry statement. It's an appeal to, to help us be educated and effective, so we can help to educate uh, the public on what we're doing and why. So. So I just, you know, that, that's just my, my lament there. And I, I saw what happened with the attempt to postpone, but, you know, this is asking a lot for us to turn on all of this and then to make potentially, this is an agenda item tonight to potentially make a recommendation on a second read number. That's a very big decision uh, with a major twist and turn that we've had just in the past couple of days. So that's my, that is, is really a lament more than anything. Yeah, listen, I, I think that's fair, but I think it's important to realize that the first slide we're working with here has been in circulation and in the public realm and in front of the Finance Committee for, for at least two weeks. So it has simply been updated with three maroon, with three peach lines. So the only difference between what we're looking at right now and what, what the Finance Committee looked at seven days ago is three peach lines. And so, and that's the only, we've only met publicly now since summer camp was canceled. So you know, I, I get it. And that's the nature of this beast. But I, I don't, this is not, this material that Tom has brought forth is not new. It's simply updated. I think your phrase floating around is a very apt one. Uh, Councilor Kucci. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the points about always striving to make things more clear and more digestible, providing better context, text. I think we need to strive to do that. But I, I, I on the same token, I will say I'm I think what we've done with the tax rate computation is an improvement. I think um, with the prior versions, it, it inappropriately made look, it look like the town was suffering, you know, taking a, a bigger part of the, the burden than the schools. And I think the way you're presenting it now, it's clear. Uh, so I, I see that as a, as a step forward. I think that's an improvement. Uh, so good job with that piece. Any more questions or discussion around Tom's update? for the first slide, so to speak. No, so I, I guess what I'll do is I'll share what, I'll share the BOE slides, my interpretation of what's happening, and it's probably the best just to bring in Kate Bolton because I'm sure there'll be questions on the school side. So um, unless Kate wants to signal to me that she wants to present it, then I will present it and then we'll go from there. So bear with me for one second. And I, I'll say right off the bat, I think I'll probably be corrected for a couple of things that I present. Um, but what I have pieced together where we are as far as the school is concerned is at some point about two weeks ago, Peter, I think you can help me with this. Um, the finance committees decided, or the fi finance chairs decided, you know, the BOE should allow their um, be given the freedom, so to speak, to allow their CIP budget, particularly that stuff that's appropriated, to be able to um, talk or speak with, so to speak, their operating budget. Um, I think we were somewhere about $750,000 of appropriated capital improvements in the school. And since they were appropriated, they have the most direct immediate effect to the mill rate. So the theory was that please make, give us some recommendations of some reductions of your appropriation. Um, and I believe right here, we have a total reduction um, of their capital, appropriated capital of about $450,000. Um, I believe they've also brought in $400,000 in fund balance and the adjustments to the operating budget. Uh, I think it's pretty important to recognize that the school board is essentially still working off our first reading. They've not received any other directive official action from us, so to speak. Um, that's part of what we can do today is to refine that if we want to. Um, so they're essentially still working around that first reading number. And in this case is to Betsy's earlier point, my hunch is their operating budget has been bumped up a little bit because their appropriated CIP has also been knocked down. 
Um, one of the things that they have done here, which is an important distinction, is they've essentially, what we see here is uh, pretending COVID-19 doesn't exist, so to speak. And so to Councillor Gleisting's earlier point, I believe they have taken out two nursing positions from the budget. They've bundled it up into a total uh, COVID-19 response package, so to speak. And it is almost presented to us independently of them working around the goal. Um, I think it would be fair to say that uh, if we were to look at this and fund this, they are asking for an increase of their operating budget of $556,000 for COVID related uh, support. So where we are is we adjusted the CIP, we adjust the operating budget to work around that first reading. However, it's been manipulated and I say manipulated not in the negative connotation, but it's been manipulated in a way that they've carved out the COVID response a, to help them fit the goal at first reading, but B, to probably highlight what is actually needed for the COVID response. Um, that is my summary. Again, I probably said something incorrect there. Um, I do actually, let me just show one quick thing before. Um, I do think it's worth what um, was also done is another tax computation rate. If you see at the top here, this is a tax computation rate to assume we funded the $556,000 for the COVID response. And what would that do? And just like below, um, just like before we have, um, we have a mill rate analysis. If we were just to say, okay, we're funding that, that's what we're looking at for a mill rate analysis if we were to fund the entire 556. And just so you can appreciate, um, for lack of a better place, but I think it's the right place, uh, we've simply added the 556 into the gross education, into yep. the operating budget. Yep, for simplicity purposes, right. Um, so with that, clearly I'm not qualified to answer questions. So Don, do I, can I assume your questions for Kate Bolton or? Yeah, that, that was my appeal, Paul, and I appreciate you taking, you know, the laboring or and trying to trying to present this, but I think it would be very helpful to have someone available to present and to explain, you know, the changes here. They're not uncomplicated. So, so that I, I would support what you have offered there. Thank you. Hey, you've been, you've been thrown into the lines, Dan. Sorry, guys, I'm having trouble with my screen here. Okay. And if there's anybody else that it makes sense to bring in, I, I'm glad to do that as well. Peter, did you have a question before I get you getting ready? Yeah, it's a question for Kate. So I don't know if Kate's ready or not ready or? Um, I Yes, I'm absolutely ready. I think Sarah was thinking about uh, coming in as well to okay. give some context yeah. from the finance committee's perspective. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here and, and I'm ready to go. Okay. I, I think I've got a couple questions I just want for clarity. So at this point, in either one of these budgets that we're seeing in front of us now, the tax computation sheet, originally there was a placeholder for 350 for engineering for the new primary school. I believe there's still 100,000 of the 350 in this budget, but 250 is not. So that's not a funded source at this point in time. Is that correct? That's correct. There was only $100,000 budgeted in uh, the budget that you folks looked at at first reading. Um, so the, the conversation was around adding to that to enable us to actually achieve the scope of that project with the updated numbers that we'd received on that. Um, but at this point, we're, we have our $100,000 that we put in for first reading, and we haven't made any changes to that. But how, so what, what's the plan for funding that if that engineering work's done next year? I think I'm going to let Sarah jump in on that one as well. Um, it's a, it's a big conversation. Yes, sorry. I have my, can you guys hear me? I'm hearing a lot of feedback. We can hear you. Okay. Can you hear us, Sarah? Maybe not. So 
on my way. Uh, well, I'll, I'll fill some fill some airtime. Um, we radio folks don't like empty airtime. Um, so I believe that there was some conversation early on with the finance committee, with the town council finance committee about possibly using some of the impact fees or reserve fees um, for school impact to try and bulk that number up a little bit without, um, without impacting the bottom line in terms of the tax rate. The other piece of conversation that we've had and the reason that the $100,000 is still in place is that uh, we thought about using the, the same sort of tactic that the, the library has been using in trying to advance their improvement project, which is to fund it partially over time and not take a big hit in any individual tax year, um, but to build up the, the funds to the point where we can make some use of them and either to do work that is um, that has some longevity, um, that is to say, you know, some types of research or, or prep work that would still be viable within a few years period, um, or simply to hold on to the funds until FY22 and try to combine them with additional funds if we're in a better position in that, in that fiscal year. Okay. Yeah, and I think, uh, Peter, I, I could speak a little bit to that as well. I, if you recall, about a week and a half ago, I sent an email to the council and I just asked if there was temperature to to um, put it on the agenda to discuss using the additional money and impact fees. And um, I asked people to respond to me individually and of the people that responded to me, there was not temperature for us to take on that right now. Um, so to, and if there is temperature for us to, to discuss it, that's fine. I just, I had received individual word from four other counselors that it wasn't quite the right time, so to speak, to, to take up this conversation, so. No, that, no. That I mean, the only reason I raise it this evening is we think about this budget and we think about a goal. I think we just need to know if we are going to be asked to find 250,000 and some other source next year. I did, I think I did respond. My concern with impact fees is I'm not convinced as I read it that you can actually use impact fees. I think it's supposed to be for a permanent structure. At this point in time, the impact fees for an engineering study is not a permanent structure. So I don't know there's, there's main state laws that govern that. So it may be out of our realm of decision-making. So I'm just trying to say, if we need to make room in the budget, we should have that on the table tonight so we can make room in the budget. If not, it's gonna be a major funding issue that we'll have to solve off cycle in some manner. And I'm just, it would be cleaner to include it if we can. So that, that's one. And, and then the second question okay. I just, or, or just, Paul, I just wanted to point out in those most recent, what I got anyway, for the most recent capital budget, there's still 2.8 million in it. And there's still 700,000 in appropriations that have not been adjusted as of this evening. So there's still 700 in appropriations in the school capital budget, just as, as sort, of a, sort of a point. So those are hey, Paul, those are, can I just check that you can hear me real quick and I can just address? Yes, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, just one other thing, and I and I think Kate covered most of it. Um, I had to drop and then dial back in, so I missed some of it. But I think, you know, the direction that we're looking for is, uh, you know, the the fact that we're in a pandemic doesn't change the fact that we still have more families and more students come to the town, and and our current situation. Um, our current, current buildings just will not meet the capacity that we're expecting to see for enrollment. So with that being the case, this is still something that we need to pursue. Um, and we were looking for direction if that could come be funded out of impact fees like things have been funded in the past. And if not, then I think it needs to come back to the finance committee and board to have a discussion on whether or not that's additional money that we want to fund within our budget uh, or not. So that, that's the ask. And if you guys are saying no, then I think we need to have a conversation on whether or not we want to add that back in. And, and obviously we still have a goal that we need to meet. So that will require obviously taking other things out. Thank you, Sarah. And I think, okay, just one last question. Of the 556 that is now being set aside in the COVID, how much of the 556 was in the original budget? 
Four hundred and thirty thousand. Add some of it. Uh, would it be helpful, Paul, if if I I don't know if I can share screen, but I I could show the the list yeah. of the items. That would be great. Yes. I, I can do that. Let's see. Do you have the share screen button at the bottom? Yeah. I okay. do. Perfect. Can it, can everybody see that? Yeah. So, so what's the original maybe, budget. What's new this evening? I'm sorry. What was in the original tier four budget that we've been talking about at the first read? Were all of these items in the original budget? Everything except the last item on the list, transportation okay. bus drivers. Okay. So in the original tier one or two reductions, I don't recall exactly which tier it was in, we had three unfilled bus driver positions, which we had proposed to reduce. And in fact, we did reduce um, as part of that $2 million reduction that you folks accepted for first reading. Um, and the amount of the other items was the 430,000 that was in that original ask that was part of our operating budget. The transportation bus drivers line that's at the bottom makes up the difference um, to the 556. And that's actually there because since the time of first reading and actually since within this last week, we've been getting more and more guidance from the Department of Education about um, school buses and what they expect our social distancing requirements to be on school buses if we if and when we get back to school in the fall. Uh, so having additional drivers is actually going to be more of a need than what we had originally expected. And it's on the COVID list now because it's in direct response to the situation and the requirement for social distancing. So, so 430 of this was in the original first read budget. So you've, yes. you've taken it, they're not new costs, you've just re-characterized them into another bucket. Yes. No, Kate, Kate, I don't know that they were in the first read, but I think they were in the first round of the tiered reduction. So our first reading did not include these, but when we right, did the I'm first sorry. I, new, Yeah. Uh, we did I the proposal that to meet your to meet the town council first reading the first edition right. of that exactly. it was included exactly so not in the school board's first reading but in the town council's first reading town council's first yeah. reading yes that's that's what I was referencing thank you I can I can see Councillor Hamill and uh, and, and Tom so Councillor Hamill I can't see anybody else so if you guys just want to pipe up it's fine I can't see anybody so <laughs> I just hey Paul if I might I want to just and uh, not to jump uh back too far, but I know Sarah mentioned uh, this question about the impact piece. So I just want to make sure we have a chance to address that tonight in some fashion, because it does seem, you know, use of impact fees, if it's a policy question, you know, it's going to be a longer discussion. And I, I, I was also one of those person, people who didn't respond and you were correct in assuming that I felt we didn't have the bandwidth for it. But, but it is, you know, if it is something that's going to require like a policy decision, and then what's the impact for future requests that are similar, I that does sound like that's going to take some time to discuss. I would not propose we do it tonight, but just just as a placeholder. Yep, I totally agree, Don. Yep. And I just want to seek clarity for myself, and perhaps others might be interested. So the re, so-called reallocation, I presume those monies that originally were destined for COVID costs uh, are now being used to perhaps restore some of the uh, positions, uh, sports programs. Um, other extracurricular is that is that a fair assumption i would call that a fair assumption yes hey S sarah can you hear me i'm sorry i can't say anybody sarah if we choose not yep. to fund this 556 can you can you speak to how it's going to get funded it will require cuts of teachers and programs there's no way around that so so just to be clear this is not i'm not debating whether we should fund it or not but this isn't an optional 556 and in, in from in your world, this need, this needs to be funded. So if, if we opt not to fund this, then there will be a trade-off. Correct. Okay. I have a question for Kate. Um, did you happen to, and I, I apologize, I I'm not caught up in the BOE um, Finance Committee meetings, um, but did you update um, the tiers so you know, so it sounds like um, about 430K, well, plus 69. So about 500,000 has been added back in from tier four. Um, can, is it 
did you update that with what's in or you you gave a, a great document I thought um, where you took your line item and you added a couple of columns to it and said if this was in and you know this would be what the savings would be and and uh, adjusted the FY21 uh, tier four column. Have you made any, do you have any similar documentation to that now with based on, I guess, the work the finance committee has done of what's in and what's out? We've been using that sort of uh, multicolored tiers document all the way through our process. Okay. And uh, Sarah actually, I think, has the latest version that she okay. created. Um, and, you know, again, it's, there's some moving targets in there. There's some questions to be answered. So okay. we haven't produced a polished one yet. We were kind of hoping that uh, after this meeting, we would have a, a more solid bottom line number to work with, and we'd be able to polish that up and, and share it. Okay, thank you. And so if you're putting in um, three bus drivers for COVID, um, has, are there... Have decisions been made about um, contact sports and things that's highly unlikely to happen or are all those things still funded on top of the COVID requests? Right now, we haven't made any reductions to sports except for a handful of them um, that appeared in our tier one, tier one and tier two originally. Okay. Um, the, tier two. Yeah, the, the same document that we have been sharing right along has um, some reductions but uh, right now, of course, our guidance changes every five minutes, it seems. But uh, right now, the MPA is talking about having fall sports. In fact, they're putting a schedule into place. Um, they're reaching out to athletic directors to talk about what types of um, policies and procedures and restrictions might be in place to make things happen. Um, but uh, I think right now we're operating on the premise that there will be some form of fall sports programs going on. And so we haven't really been able to quantify what it would look like not to have them. Right, it's just, it's a little incongruous to say kids won't be able to sit next to each other on the bus. At the same time, they're gonna, you know, be playing in heads. Um, you know, I think there was there was one board member that said, you know, maybe maybe some stakes have to be put in, put in the ground about, you know, what gets fun and what doesn't. You know, sadly, on the community services side, some stakes had to get put in the ground. Um, so I know it's it's tough, though. It's so hard to know, and the guidance changes every day. Um, you know, I really like the idea of breaking out the the COVID package. Um, you know, and I've heard of other towns, you know, borrowing the money to cover this COVID COVID package. So you know, another point. Awesome. Another thought in, in that regard, Betsy, is, uh, and Tom and I have talked about this a little bit just in terms of process, that if there is any money to come our way, um, town or school, from the feds, you know, any additional money that's supposed to be addressing COVID-related needs, it might help us to have a, a solid understanding of, of what expenses we have that are specifically driven by. Right. Um, by those, uh, by this pan pandemic, and and not just part of our regular world. I think that's a really good idea. And that 114k, I think that was in the first set of tiers that you said was related. I think to Title One funding or something like that. That there was a little bit of COVID relief that was expected. Is that still there? Is that gone? Am I just remembering that wrong? Or uh, we have talked about that. There's um, some money that has a bunch of acronyms attached to it that has already come down from the federal government. Uh, Scarborough schools are entitled to $105,000 or $106,000. It's linked to Title I in terms of the way that they have developed their um, funding distribution. It's not really Title I money. It's just they've used the uh, okay. Title I distribution method to figure out what each district gets. Um, and so that money is actually available. And interestingly, where you see um, on the COVID chart that we're using, we have sanitation, cleaning supplies, hand washing, PPE. We've got $28,000 in there. Yeah. It's, prob it's probably going to cost us about $128,000, but we're expecting to use um, that CARES money to purchase actual physical stuff, um, you know, masks, gloves, gowns, cleaning equipment. So you accounted for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. But it's not in our operating budget because it's considered separate federal funds. Okay. Thank you. 
Hey, Kate, if we do get reimbursed for the COVID cost, it, do we just assume that 556 gets ro rolled over to fund balance? It, I mean, all, clearly there's not a mechanism yeah. to, right? There's not a mechanism to give it back to the town, to the well, taxpayers. Right, the mechanism is that the next year we don't ask for so much that, I mean, in a, in a sense, it is a mechanism to give it back to the town, but um, but you're right. It, and of course it would depend on timing. I mean, if if they, if they we were to get a, a telegram tomorrow that says, hey, here comes your money, that, that would allow us to make some decisions up front. But once the budget for the school is, is, um, is validated and we're moving forward, then you're absolutely correct. It would, it would, if it was unused funds, then it would roll forward. Yep. Hey, hey Paul, can I just make a, a quick clarification just because I think there are a lot of people watching from the public. Um, any of the activities or sports that were in the original proposal to be reduced have actually been restored by the finance committee. So as of right now, we have restored all of those athletics um, but further to my, to my earlier point, if we had to fund this 556,000, we would have to make reductions in sports. Hey, hey, Sarah, I got a uh, counselor Johnson. I'm going to ask a question and then your question. Um, Sarah, can you just speak to the, the way we, can you just give us the, the, the quick bullet points and yeah, what your guiding principles were. So for example, I'm pretty sure you eliminated some positions that didn't have a human in it, but you've, you've maintained the ones that do the sports, can you just give us some of those highlights on what this what this does and what it accomplishes? Yeah, so our, our general approach was uh, one, just to listen to the feedback that we've received from the community, from our teachers, our staff and, and the administration. Um, we got a significant amount of feedback on sort of the impact cutting sports and after school activities um, would have. And then in addition to that, we wanted to refrain um, prevent cutting any existing direct positions that have a direct impact on students, so primarily teachers. Um, there are, you'll notice if you know, in the latest round, there are some positions that are being, uh, that are either retirement or currently unfilled that we're saying can remain unfilled. So although that's te technically an, uh, an FTE, it's not, it wouldn't, would not result in a layoff because it's not an existing employee or it's a retirement. So that was our, our general approach, if that Thank answers you. your question. Yeah, yeah, I just, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, Councilor Johnson, do you have a question? I, you raise your hand, I don't. That was actually just a general question. Uh, I was curious, every time, you know, it, it's questioned what happens if we don't fund that, the answer always is immediately we have to cut teachers, uh, which is, you know, an emotional topic for everyone. But I'm sitting here looking at your cap budget and there's still an awful lot of appropriated money there. So general question, you're going to tell me you're going to cut teachers. Uh, are teachers worth more than facility support? Or not? I mean, have we gone back to that set and just with the sharpest pencil you can possibly do say, what can we defer for a year? What can we go without to absorb the 556? Again, general question, I don't understand why we have to immediately go we got to cut teachers because that does it raises a lot of emotions with a lot of people, myself included. So maybe the yeah, question, um, yeah, go ahead, Sarah. I'm sorry. Sorry, Ken. Do you want to finish your question? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that we're um, immediately going to teachers. I just think it's inevitable. I'm not saying that the entire $500,000 is going to be of teachers, um, but that's a lot of money. And you can, we have looked at the CIP budget and I'm sure if, if, you know, required, we can go back and take another look, but the things that are in there that are appropriated. So again, have an impact on the tax rate, which is the goal that we were given. Um, would also have impact, direct impact on students. So if you go by our guiding principles, that being one of them, um, you know, there are things in the CIP budget that would certainly have an impact on students. Now, it's it's a nice talking point to say, you know, that we think think things are more important than teachers, but I don't think that's fair. And I would appreciate it if we stop using that line because that's certainly not our strategy or our approach. Okay, I apologize. That's what I. That's what I heard from you, so I apologize. Mis misheard it. 
Any just any other questions for Sarah or Kate? So when I kind of rolled up the budget and there's been a lot of changes since I did it, you know, it's just sound about right. There's about um, not including health care, I guess, because taking that whole department out of it. Um, there's there's about um, eight or nine hundred thousand dollars worth of salary uh, uh, increases in your budget. Is that is that about right? When I rolled up the different salary changes, that's about what it seemed to come to. That's not all people getting increases, but new positions, I guess, and um, you know, cost of living and, and that type of thing. Um, is that does that sound about right? When I when I rolled up the different categories taking out the health care, that's about what it came to. I haven't actually done that math, Betsy. I could certainly do it okay. for you. Yeah, that would be great because that's that's what it that's what it looks like. Uh, the, the salary increases are, are coming in. I know there's been a lot of conversation about whether or not um, you know there would be some movement on the school side, like we've had on the town side of you know a six month uh, no cola things like that. Um, you know that probably could maybe even get into another you know hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Um, it, it seems like. Uh, no conversation has occurred around that. Is that correct? I, I think if you guys are interested in talking about the contract, we need to bring Hillary in. No, not, not the contract. I'm just talking about the wage increases in general. I, you know, the, the, not the teacher contract, but the contracts, um, I guess, in general, the, the public unions where we've had some concessions on our side, I think they're listed on Tom's. You guys are not looking at any concessions on your side for COLAs, et cetera. Is that correct? Uh, right now that the no reductions in COLAs are, have been built into the budget. So, right. So That's yeah, correct. that rolled up number would be quite helpful. I, I, I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see that because you know, um, I'd like to see it rolled up on our side as well, because um, you know we're we're asking people to do a lot here, and um, I think we just need to get the best information that we can so that people can can uh, figure out you know if they support this. So Betsy, can I just ask um, when you're talking about rolling up the numbers, you were you were looking at the detailed um, GL account line item. Budget. It said salary or wages. Yeah. Anything that said salary on it. Okay. But not yeah. the health care. And actually, maybe not even special ed. I don't remember, but I, I can't remember. I, I can send it to you if you're. If you're if okay. You're. Yeah. So if you have something that you've already worked on that I, you'd like me to update, that, that'd be a good I really appreciate point. it. I find your information quite helpful. So yeah, I'd be happy to send it. Thank you. Cool. Any others? No. All right, guys, I'm going to kick you out and pull you in if we need you again. Sound good? Cool. Thanks. Uh, okay, so item number three, you have to excuse me, I have lost my, my agenda. Um, it's uh, establishing the final tax rate target. Thank you. So obviously, before we jump right into that, I think um, just let I let's set a clock and have 15 minutes of just conversations of what we heard and processing what we heard. I, I don't jumping right into a final number is, I mean, I'll start. I think Betsy, I think you, your question, I, you know, I agree with, I think it's a little bit, first of all, the 556 COVID fund, I think is a good way to frame it, but then that that's essentially a $550,000 ask. Um, and you know, I I maintain to be a little. I'm a, still a little frustrated because we have. I think everywhere from our non-unions to our librarians to Tom's bonus to I think at this point every one of our unions, I think we've been able to recapture some some help in those aspects. So, you know, my initial reaction is I don't really have a I don't have an appetite to today fully fund that 556. Um, to be 100% honest. Um, that's where I am. I think I've been pretty clear. I'm, I've been around the 1.5% place this whole time. And I think 1.2 is a pretty good spot without the 556. And um, 
that, that again i'm just talking out loud to start the conversation so jean marie yeah um I, it's funny i was thinking um i would i would split that 556 with the school uh, again, I'm also um, in the camp of a 1.5. Um, I'm not sure what that number looks like because I'm not that fast with the numbers uh, when I'm trying to pay attention to something else. But um, yeah, the, and I think Betsy's questions regarding the, the COLAs were, were pretty much right on. I mean, we have seen sacrifices all over the place. Um, and I'm just curious as to what schools may be able to come up with and if we say well we're willing to give you x amount but you've still got to come up with whatever um maybe they do some more thinking along those lines so that's where i'm at anybody else mr hamill you're on mute oh there you go thanks um yeah i uh, I'm wrestling with this. I mean, there's, there's this an expression called, uh, you know, it's all about managing expectations. Well, my expectations were really quite different. You know, I expected we were trending down. The number was trending down and oops, pop goes the weasel, uh, you know, COVID again, and it goes up. Okay. So that, that troubles me. Um, and also I think a couple of the points that others have made, we, we have really worked diligently and I know we've gotten a lot of feedback from the public, uh, some quite pungent, you know, some reasonable and lots in between. And I, I, you know, we appreciate that, but we're working hard to try to set an example and to drive to a place where this is going to be acceptable, not agreeable, but acceptable to everybody. And I, so I, I have to say, I, uh, you know, I thought we were making two steps forward. Uh, now we have one step back based upon these numbers that I'm seeing. And I think I have questions about the COVID assumptions. You know, is there a chance they might be relaxed? You know, the, even the governor relaxed uh, the return to work requirements. Now, you all you have to do is you don't have to self quarantine for 14 days. You just got to sign, you know, sign a statement that you've done that. So, is it possible that the COVID requirements may also be relaxed or not as stringent as we understand the direction to be today? So, I, I'm, you know, I'm not comfortable trying to set a number at all. And I'm not comfortable with, you know, where it's trending. And I'm, I'm still struggling with our partners uh, on the school side. You know, really, uh, I had expectations that they would at least be walking with us, uh, you know, side by side. And I don't see that so far. I'm sorry. Councilor Hayes? Yeah, I guess we're on, you know, a couple of things. And, 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 you know, I mean, it is a recognition. This is just really strange times. And the, the goal polls have been moving and they've been moving just there's a lot of events out there. Um, I, I, it does concern me a little bit that, especially the COVID piece that we have discussed, I mean, 430,000 of that, well, all of it actually was in the original budgets and, and got removed, that it's being added back in. And if at tier four, which is what we've been talking about, you know, 430 of that COVID expense was, was in the budget. So, you know, adding it as, as it's characterized, adding that back in is an additional ask. So that's, that's one piece for me. The second piece for me on that is, I still think, and, and I think Councillor Johnson asked a great question. It was a question I asked earlier. There's still $700,000 in appropriations. Um, certainly maybe some of those appropriations could be looked at additionally. Maybe there's enough room in appropriations to cover the COVID. Um, some things in appropriations may absolutely touch students. Other things like painting a hallway or that type of thing may not. Um, I think there's room there. But I, I, I am most concerned about if we really think, and I think we're, we're, we're dancing around a major issue, if we need to do the engineering study for the school, that needs to be in our budget someplace. I'm really nervous about mid-year, much like the modulars, that we are scrambling sometime mid-year to find $250,000 someplace. I'd, I'd hate to do an additional allocation. So I think if we need to do it, it should be a budget item. It should be in the appropriated capital line. And we need to, to make an allowance for that, that, that it's in this budget that, that we do at second read if, if we think we need to do the work next year. I don't think we can do it from impact fees or at least that was a concern. We talked about the module and I remember 
you know, Council Fuji really being concerned about using impact fees for non-permanent structures, which I think this is. So I think there's some states, we just need the answer to that. If we can't do it through impact fees, how are we gonna fund it? So I think that's something to look at. Um, I am closer, I would, I don't know if you wanna know where we are. I guess that's the second part of the conversation, but those are things, I don't think we can wait to decide what to do with the, with the school engineering if we think it's gonna happen. So I don't think we can kick that can down the road. I think it's gonna be built into the budget number we get tonight. So, I mean, Peter, the other side of that is we take the 100,000 out and say, nobody come talk to us for a year. I mean, right, I mean, that's- well, what, I, Yeah, I mean, I think the question for the school is if they, I mean, if we think we need to do it and, and there's, you know, building modulars doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. And it's gonna take five years to do it. So if we're at a point where we, if they're gonna ask for the money during the next fiscal year, then we should budget for it. If they're not gonna ask for it, then you're right, Paul, we should make a decision to take it out of the budget and move on. But, but not, not having it be the elephant in the room we're not gonna talk about and try to find funding off cycle, I don't think is a good model. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just not to go down that rabbit hole, but I would fully support taking it out of the COP CIP altogether and send a pretty clear signal that we'll resume in a year's time. So that's my personal opinion on that. But uh, Councillor Johnson. Yeah. The engineering is for the new school. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I have to backtrack just there. The engineering is for the new school. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. The new 350 right. for the new school. But I'm not an educator but I've been reading a lot of the guidance and, and I don't think we know what we're engineering yet. Isn't that correct? I mean, a lot of people started to think this may be definitely a new, a new mode of, of teaching, a blended, you know, staggered day, some remote learning. So, I mean, how do you engineer to something that you don't understand what it is yet? We, we definitely don't do that in software, do we? <laughs> you got to define it and then we'll design it. But anyway, so yeah, I would, uh, I, I'd put it off this cap budget and go into next because we'll definitely know a lot more by next year. Sorry, Councilor Clucci, <laughs> I had a visitor, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think Peter made some good points there. I, I think, uh, and, and maybe there's still so, some time with, with the finance committee work that's left to, uh, you know, we've already tapped the brakes essentially on all of the major capital improvement projects for next year, but what we haven't done is talk through how we might prioritize or sequence them um, in a way that uh, minimizes the, the blip or impact on the tax rate. So uh, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think if it, if it has to happen this year, it should be in the budget. It should be discussed and, and be out in the open. If not, uh, I am perfectly willing to let's look out five, 10 years uh, either through the finance committee or some other mechanism and, and try to plan for how we might tackle some of the major projects that are coming down the road. Um, in, in terms of uh, giving guidance on a number, you know, I've been at 2% uh, from the beginning and, and that was with the expectation we might need to work some back in um, if things don't, you know, flush out the way that, that we hoped. Um, so I think coming in right now where we're at, you know, basically 1% without the COVID uh, fund and 2% and with, uh, you know, somewhere's in the middle there is, is I, I think I could be pretty comfortable. Um, I think that's a reasonable ask of the taxpayer with the understanding that there's still quite a bit of uncertainty in some of the other non-property tax revenue items and that those items are going to have to be managed as, as the year goes on if the, the revenues don't play out. So I, I think that's a, for me anyways, a comfortable hedge position. Any others? Yeah, John, what, so which one was that? Was that 2% you said you were comfortable with? Just to... I, I, I was comfortable with 2%. I would support a 1.5% right now as well. Okay. Uh, Councilor Geisting? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I've definitely had problems from the very beginning about talking about this in terms of mill rate. I've, I've made that no secret because um, it's a very strange year. Um, we are still looking at revenue. We're going to have... Um, we should have a new revenue number in very quickly, um, which would reflect April uh, revenue sharing. Um, and the state may give us uh, what they expected to get. So they're taking it from the rainy day fund, but they also report um, how much uh, revenue is actually down. So 
you know, we're getting more and more information on that all the time. Um, I think there's been a lot of mis, uh, misperceptions about all of that. So I, I um, revenue obviously was my biggest concern this year in terms of uh, talking mill rate at all. Um, I think even today with all of the information that is been given to us and put in front of us um, and without time to even run the numbers, um, I'm, I'm still not comfortable saying a mill rate. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not at two, um, but uh, my, my bigger comfort level would be to be talking about a, a budget increase for the schools. And I have been in favor of a budget increase for the schools um, before the education budget since day one. I never believed the school budget was going to be a 0% mill rate. I think there's been um, a lot of misperceptions about that. There's a, a lot of different ways of getting to zero. Um, they're at 3.3% right now um, without the COVID and they're at 126%, uh, well, I'm sorry, 100, let's call it 100% because these numbers aren't broken out, but they're um, at 100% or so, I guess, on their, their capital um, uh, appropriation. So um, those increases, if I just try to look as best I can, uh, are too high in, in this year. Um, and so, uh, you know, without the chance to run the numbers, you know, I would be comfortable with a two to two and a half percent increase in the school budget. That's not mill rate. I'm talking about an increase in the school budget um, and uh, a much less increase on the capital side. So, um, you know, again, mill rate for me, um, I'm not there yet. I haven't been able to run the numbers. Tom's been giving us really good information at the, at the FinCom. We've gone over revenue every single time. Um, and, uh, you know, I just would like to say, you know, come back, you know, we have to make some cuts everywhere and hopefully, uh, you know, people can do that. So uh, I didn't mention the COVID package. I, I, um, you know, if I could wave a wand, we'd find a different way to, to keep the COVID package out and fund the COVID package uh, in a, a completely different way. I'd love to hear if there's anything creative that we could do with that because it's unusual and it's, um, it hopefully is not going to come again. And you know the problem I have putting it into the tax rate is that let's say it doesn't materialize. Um, so we're going to have sports, but we're going to need kids sitting apart on the beach. I just think it's so. Who knows what it is right now? Um, you know, in reality, if it's not 556, if it's two million, we're going to have to come up with that that money somewhere, probably out of the fund balance if we don't get any money from the state or the federal. So I guess I'm just not really in favor of funding it at all right now because we don't know what it is. And, um, you know, I think, you know, we got to find a, a better way or a creative way to fund it. If it's starting to come out of fund balance, I think, you know, early meeting and I, you know, I, you can, you can not have this attributed to you, but I think one, one comment by the town manager was this is emergencies or what fund balance is for. So I, you know, we're, we're, we're taking this COVID, we're peeling it out, we're taking a conservative approach on increases all out the municipal side. I would love to see the school be a little more conservative on what they're asking for. And then we deal with the COVID as it starts to happen. Thanks, Councilor Geising. Uh, Councilor Johnson and then. Yeah, I was wondering what, what's What's the latest uh, we're hearing from the governor on that $1.2 billion she's sitting on up in Augusta? <laughs> Councilor Caterina? <laughs> the latest is the feds have it all tied up with the rules. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs, but right. having talked to let the um, to Pingree's office, King's office, I wasn't able to make the, me make the meeting with Collins, so I don't know what went on there, but um, it, basically you can't give COVID money to municipalities of less than 500,000 people but, directly. So yeah, not, not go figure. Feds. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a fed problem that they're trying to uh, unlock right now. So stay tuned. That's all I can tell but, you. 
Lynn. Yeah, so there was a really good editorial today by the mayor of Auburn about this in the Portland oh, Post Herald. Oh, God. Um, and, um, you know, what, uh, what he said is there's guidance that came out on May 4th, and New Hampshire has actually started to use some of those funds based on that guidance. So hopefully the governor is finding ways to do that. They actually gave some money to municipalities. Anyway, you have to read it yourself. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it seems like politics is definitely getting involved in this. I think people should call their state reps. They should call the governor's office. Um, they, we should, at a minimum, be doing, doing what New Hampshire is doing and, and getting these funds out there. Um, it's not that it's not that municipalities don't get any of the 1.2 billion. It's that we didn't get it directly from the feds. The money is sitting there with the state, um, so they've got to figure out how to get it out there. Um, yeah. And and Jason's uh, letter to the editor today, um, of course, you can take it for what it's worth. Supposedly has some. It's not exactly true what he was talking about with New Hampshire. But that being said, uh, the bottom line is that there are strings to it so that we're trying to un unlock at this point so there are strings to it yeah okay so um any others i think first of all council glassy and i agree with a lot of what you said i mean i've struggled as well i don't putting a quote mill rate goal on this doesn't compute in my brain but i mean at some point i mean i think the boe i mean are we adjourning this meeting with the status quo because if we're looking at that then i think we're looking at a real-time second reading dealing with this 556 and dealing with and i just what i that's exactly what i'm trying to avoid i feel like we should come out of here with you know maybe maybe it's not the exact mill rate target but i think if we don't have more clarity coming out of here we need to start converging on where we need to be otherwise we're going to be at second reading doing this in real time and I mean, obviously our frustra your frustration and my frustration back at you was pretty clear to begin this meeting. If we're making these decisions on second reading, it's a recipe for disaster, I think. So I just, I'm trying to, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, the agenda item does say new goal. Yes, Mr. Hamill, go ahead. Uh, you uh, asked for suggestions and I agreed, Paul, with what you said about it being a, uh, a food fight, you know, if we try to do this real time at second reading. Yeah, I really think that would not be good. However, we were tracking and trending a certain way with the expectation we would be able to set a number this evening. That was my expectation we agreed to try to do that this evening. Is there another way? Is there a way for us to punch this by a week, try again, uh, and then we're in shape you know, for the second reading? We pin the number then. I, I personally have not had a chance to settle down from what I've seen in the past 24 hours. You know, and, and it's taken a lot for me to get my head around it, to see how I really feel, to really kind of take my breath and say, okay, now here's what I'd like to do. So that, that would, you know, is there a possibility for that as another option? Not, not trying to muddy the waters. So let's see if we can do a little bit of exercise. Let's do this exercise and maybe it's gonna blow up my face. But if we take the COVID account, right? The COVID ask, and let's remove that for a second. I'm comfortable where we are. I am, I'm comfortable with the reductions. If that COVID, for me, my issue is what do we do with that COVID ask? Everything else I'm comfortable with. So I guess, it, are people able to answer that? If we separate the COVID out, are we comfortable where we are? Because if we are, then that becomes, yes. what are we going to do with the COVID? Uh, and, and Paul, we, can I, uh, Paul, clarity, you yep. said originally, 1.5 is where you are. If you're saying you're comfortable with where we are without COVID, that's 1.16. Which one of those are you comfortable with? One point, I'm okay with one. I, right? Yes, like right. if you took the COVID out, yeah, I would, I'd be okay right now. I'd be, I, I think the BOE has done a good job of preserving jobs, moving things around. Yes, I think the COVID is a little, little, it's, it's necessary, but it's also a little throws us for a loop, right? It's a little tricky, sneaky, whatever, however you want to call it. But yeah, so I guess I'm not advocating, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not advocating to be right at 1.5 right now. I don't need any more cuts. I'm good with where we are. And to me, my issue is what are we going to do with a COVID account? So I guess my question, like, so yes, Peter, am I okay with a 1.16 right now? I am. I am. Okay, could I, I just want to get clear about yeah, you said you're okay. Yeah. Well, would, would I would I go higher if the co I would go a little bit higher, but I think that's a decision like to me that's just the COVID. Like, 
do we cover part of that? Do we cover all that? Do we cover none of that? So that's what I'm trying to tease out here. Sorry, Don, go ahead. So just building on this, the comments you both have made and the rest of the, the group has, has made, um, you know, I, you know, that neighborhood, I'm not uncomfortable with it, but the question is then what happens? Does the work continue? Does it, continue? you know, because if we take COVID out, oop, surprise, it comes back in, or there's something else that happens between now and, and the, you know, the, the final read, the second reading. So I, what happens process-wise? We freeze the number and that's where we are. And then, uh, you know, off we go. But what, what happens with the other work that may be in motion? Because that's a worry. We've just said out of one side of our mouth, we want to see more from the, the BOE. And the other side of our mouth, we're saying we're, we're good with everything except COVID. Those are two very different things. Well, I, well, I think maybe it was one of them was my mouth and one of them was your mouth. So maybe that's our sides of our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> because I think I've been, I think you and I both have been consistent, but differing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Councillor Hayes. Yeah, just trying to answer Don's question, I think, and, and test it with everybody else. I would say, I think all we're trying to do tonight is to give more clarity to the Board of Education, what they need to be thinking about. Don, I think to your question, yeah, it's a moving target. And I think this group, and, you know, and let others speak, but I mean, if there is some type of unusual event that occurs between now and the next couple of weeks, I mean, that's a reason to come back if we find out revenues have changed dramatically, either up or down, um, we can come back. But I think we're trying to give general direction. And I guess I would, I would agree with Paul. Uh, I'd be more comfortable if there was a zero, starting with the, you know, zero point something. But I think where we are for now, this is a good target and I could support that. I, I think the biggest thing we all need, it, but the caveat that I have, what did we decide about the school engineering? I, I think that's an important caveat. Is that off the table or is that on the table? And we could leave it that it, this is the right target for now. And if they think they need to do it, then they can look at appropriations or some other ways to fund it. But I think, I think, I think we need to be clear about, I'm really, I think an easy part of the budget process and not an off cycle. Well, so so the to, to your point, so the, the school's currently in, in their capital budget, correct? I mean the hundred thousand uh, schools in their hundred thousand. They they need three fifty, they got a hundred. Right. But 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 it's within our purview to manipulate their capital their capital. No, I mean I, I would suggest if we're clear on if this targets the target, then we can turn the whole thing back to them and they they've already said to us they're gonna have to go back and make some decisions about what that means for programming and staffing and other things. They've got different different ways they can go at it, but it gives them clarity about where we are. They, they can make the choice to go to appropriations or not, but that's just a suggestion. But that's where the engineering would belong. It would belong as an appropriated item. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is we could, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we could have a consensus today and set a signal to them one way or the other. So for instance, if if it's clear the majority of us are going want that hundred thousand and appropriate in, in the CIP to be removed, we're that's perfectly within our purview to do it because it's in their capital improvement project. Uh, that's true, right? So I guess so I guess you know we could say, hey, good news, you only have four hundred and fifty to find because we're not going to approve the hundred, <laughs> right? So I mean, would we is that something we'd be willing to do or not? I don't. I'm just that's what that's the type of stuff that we could come to tonight yeah. to to have more clarity. So, right, that's why I bring it up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tom. I, I would just suggest, uh, on behalf of the school, having been involved in these projects, uh, it, it seems quite clear based on the enrollment projections, this need is not going to go away. So, I think it would be unfortunate to potentially lose twelve months of planning effort. So, one option is to to keep it in, albeit underfunded at a hundred thousand. At least they can advance some of that work. Uh, but if there's uncomfort uh, on the part of the council to fund additional. Then, then that's what you do. You don't, you don't. You don't provide any additional. But I think it would be unfortunate to simply hit the pause button and think that the problem will go away on its own because I, I, I'm quite sure it won't. So can I clarify? So you're, what you're saying is the portion that would come from impact fees goes away. The portion that's currently sitting in the, the, the 100K that's in the capital budget stays. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, I, would, I would love for the council- I think it's important to keep moving the issue forward. I would love for the council to have a detailed discussion around the use of impact fees. I personally don't see the, that, that it's 
problematic, but I fully appreciate that it's an area, it's a gray area. So uh, that's a conversation that could be had, but in the meantime, allow the work to continue, albeit at a much reduced level. Councilor Gleisey. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the agenda, but um, I, I wanted to know if we were talking about the process tonight, I think Tom brought up um, doing the second read on the 24th and the regular town council meeting on the 17th being an, um, a, uh, a time that we were going to um, uh, kind of have more discussion, but uh, make sure that we can digest all the numbers. Um, technically we have till July 5th on the 60 days. Um, so that seemed to have just come up. Is that gone away? Where, where do we stand on that, the second read date? Currently, the second read date is on the 24th of. So it did get moved. OK, so that's what we were trying to figure out today. So yeah, it's going to be a special town. Yeah, thanks. It's going to be okay. a special town it's council. It's not meeting. on the calendar at all, the town calendar. So I, I wasn't sure we were done with that. So um, OK, well, so I guess I guess my confusion about tonight, I have lots of confusion. I, you know, how about this? These are crazy times. I agree with a lot of what Jean Marie said. Um, so uh, the, uh, you know, the confusion I'm having is we, you know, I mean, the, the board is here for a lot of them. Um, they, they gave some statements um, saying they can't support any reductions beyond where we are now, as it will without question require cuts to our staff programming and activities of all of which are essential for our students development and safety. Um, I did get caught up on their, their last meeting. Um, there was a, you know, a letter to the, you know, letter read into the record that said um, they need to stand firm and, and call our bluff. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I, I'm taking the information that we've been given from them over the last couple of days, the public statements, as well as this one, they're done. This is what they want. Um, and this is what, uh, this is where they, they stand on that. So I'm not sure that we have to give them direction back. I, I don't know. I guess that, that part's a little bit confusing to me. Well, I, I, yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I, you know, that's why I was trying to break it into two issues. I mean, are we, uh, Alicia and Sarah, I see you guys just give, just give me a moment. I'll bring you guys in. I, I was just trying to have a conversation amongst us and we can, we can bring them in. I'm, I guess, you know, again, if, if we don't, if we don't deal with this today, then, then are we going to in real time decide if we're going to fund $556,000 for COVID at second reading? And, and, and maybe we do, and maybe that, I just, but I, you know, to me, I feel like we're, to your point, Betsy, I feel like we're pretty close to finishing the work up here. And so to me, the more specific we can get, the better. I, I mean, and maybe. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't frame it as, you know, def, you know, at our final conversation is 552 for COVID because, you know, that's making it sound like we don't want to fund COVID. I mean, schools are going to have to fund COVID. You know, the town's gonna have to find COVID. Tom just had to find money or not find, but restored some money for a program he feels is very important and makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, I don't think the final conversation should be, are we funding COVID? Or are we not funding COVID? You know, they're, they're getting instructions every day. It's, it, you know, they're making decisions um, and they're doing great work. They're putting task force together. Um, they're, I can't believe all the stuff that they're doing. It's, 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 uh, it's great. Um, but, you know, nobody knows what that, that number is going to be. I think, you know, as you say, I don't, I don't want to call it a, you know, it, it, it's, it's a good way for them to characterize it for themselves. I don't know that we need to characterize it as that, that we're not going to fund it. H how much of the budget that they've given us, which is a 3.3% increase and about, I don't have the number in front of me, but somewhere about a hundred percent increase on capital appropriations. How much of that do we do we want to fund? That that's what I'm I'm looking at, um, and that's you know, COVID or not. So I think but, it's great that so, they're breaking it out, but so, I, I don't want to say oh, I'm not. I'm voting against COVID. I'm you know I'm never going to. So Betsy, just to be clear though, I I mean what I'm hearing. So tell me if I'm wrong. You're you're saying they should find the five six five fifty six themselves. That that's what you're saying. Let's not call it COVID, but you think that it's a, and so now we're getting somewhere in my mind, if you think that they should. Well, it was more it's like, gonna, it's gonna take know, again, I, I'm so uncomfortable having to do numbers on the fly. It wasn't the whole 552. So I, I, I have to leave it at that. I'm not comfortable. 
because I haven't been able to run the number. It definitely was not the whole 552. Gotcha. Like, that's not the number. I'm looking at the overall budget more. Um, and so it's it's probably, I don't know. I don't want to say unless we take a break. If we take a 15 minute break and come back, you know, where I can run some numbers, you know, I, I, I'll say. Dean Marie. Yeah, I was just, well, I was going to ask Betsy because I was getting a little confused. Uh, but so Betsy, what you're saying is you can't live with any of the budget numbers that you're seeing the tax rate computation on the second sheet, which includes the COVID-19. And the reason I, I prefer looking at mill rate, and I know we have a difference there, is that that's what the taxpayer is looking at, because they're looking at the tax bill at the end of the day. Uh, and for, for me, it makes it easier. But again, I'm a bigger picture person. Uh, I'm not digging into all the little details and whatever, because I don't see that as my job. Um, I do see is, you know, we got to look at the bigger picture, the bigger trends, what's going on and whatever. That's why I, I mean, frankly, I could live with 2.0, say, 0.8% here. I could live with that. Absolutely. But, you know, to be realistic and to get everyone on board, I'm looking at, you know, what if we got it to 1.5? And, and I think that to get to 1.5 would take a, now, John, I'm looking at Mr. Clucci to see if I did my math right. <laughs> 323,000 reduction to the net appropriation would get us to 1.5. So that would be saying to the schools, all right, guys, we'll give you X amount, but you guys have to come up with 323 or whatever we decided to do, uh, which I know sounds like Sol King Solomon and splitting the baby, but Sometimes you have to do that in order to come up with something that is gonna work for most people. I mean, the bottom line for me is there's no way in heck I would ever support a 0% um, to the budget, but I've been real clear about that since day Right, one. yeah, so. no, those are great points, Jean Marie. And I, I you, know, you know, definitely in the bottom line, the mill rate is, is what matters. I, I guess I'm not as confident this year in a lot of our revenue projections yet. I know we're still working through them. And, um, you know, you know, valuations, revenue projections, that type of thing. So um, I, I do fear if we hit it 1.5 by the time we, you know, commit taxes and some other, you know, things, you know, come into play that it, it may not, it may be different from that. So. Yeah. Tom, uh, Don and then Tom, sorry. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I want to jump the tracks here. You know, I think we're having a good discussion. I um, is it? I don't want to propose a solution, but I do want to reflect on what happened. We had provided direction, pretty clear direction to to the board of that in terms of uh, what we were expecting them to do, and they came back, you know, not with not with three or four hundred thousand dollars in savings, but with uh, six hundred thousand, five hundred fifty-six thousand dollars increase in the other direction. So that that's really what happened, and between the last time that we set a number and guidance that we gave. Is it, is it possible that we could try to separate the two or three things that we've identified as of tough issues, including the use of impact fees and there are one or two others. Could we try to solve for those, but at the same time provide direction you know, for where we'd like to be at second reading? but we do a check-in at the council meeting next Wednesday. So it gives us another shot at things. We're able to see how they trend up or down and it gives us one more touch base as hopefully we're coming in on some sort of, you know, flight path. I, so I'm just trying to break it down because I don't, I'm not sure we can do all of that tonight, you know, address the, the key questions, COVID uh, impact fees and so forth. Um, and, and also set a number. I think we're not far off actually in terms of what people are saying about a, about a number. So yeah, I, I, Don, I think the only, the only thing I would push back, I mean, again, they've had one directive from us and that's first reading. I mean, and they've matched what we've asked them to do at first reading. I mean, we have it, it's sitting there. And they're, they're saying that they want, they're trying, I mean, the 556 is an additional ask. It is what it is. So in, to that aspect, I completely agree with you. Right. Yep. It, it's the first reading number plus 556. So, so yeah. If that's the case. That would argue in favor of a lower number if we're trying to come into something without it having to go up again. Yeah, sure. Above, yep. I mean, I, but if past experience indicator, I mean, that's likely what's going to happen. So, 
Not exactly, Paul, because Tom has had to further reduce revenue as we've gone on, and the town has had to make a lot more cuts. That's so fair enough. Yeah, you're, you're at, the town has made yeah. a lot more cuts. Yeah. Our yeah, union totally right. concessions, yeah. and there's been a lot more cuts made on the town side, and these are not simple cuts. These are these are real cuts to public safety, to different parts of things we're not going to do on capital. So, you know, the, the, you know when I read that we were at 1.6 with the first read, I thought, yeah, okay, that came in. That's an analysis that had not been done. We all say, oh, first read, first read. It's not, it's not broken down yet. It's just first read. Well, you know, that was not a real number at that time. You know, Tom has gone through very carefully and he's continuing every day to go through the revenue numbers and not just the revenue, but additional cuts. So we've gotten to where we are right now um, to, to Councillor Hamill's point on the town side. Yeah, I think that, I think that's fair. We've we've lost about seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue, and every dime of that's been made up on Tom's back. I think that's. Yeah, I just want to point out to Councillor Gleistein's point: um, we can only commit taxes once, and so no one is more concerned than I am that we get those revenue projections as accurate as we can, because the final tax rate and that commitment uh, is what we'll have to live with. And so, if there if we have terribly underestimated other revenue sources. The only way to deal with that, frankly, or the first way will be through budget curtailment, and that will be on my shoulders. So I am acutely aware of that responsibility. Um, but at the same time, time marches on. And as I sit here, I, I don't expect that I'll have much new information between now and when your second reading comes. So I'm feeling as though we have made the adjustments uh, to the best of my knowledge at this point, and we'll have to live with the consequences of that. I guess I would implore you to, to keep talking and working through this because the sooner the board knows, uh, the better. Uh, they will need time to consider their options, whether it's to reconsider capital funding, uh, whether it's to seek uh, concessions from staff, uh, that, that doesn't happen overnight. And so I, I fear even a week's delay will cause uh, irreparable harm in their ability to modify their priorities. Councilor Cucci. Um, yeah, to uh, Councillor Gleiston's point earlier about uh, some municipalities or school districts funding or uh, the COVID response through debt service, uh, I'd like to understand if that's a possibility for us. So I, I guess I'll, I, I don't know if uh, if it's a if there's some exception with some some of the uh, the rules that have been passed, but uh, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, Tom. I. I it strikes me that if there are capital items, those are likely to be worthy, but I cannot imagine how you'd fund positions or uh, uh, dispensable or, or non-durable items like PPE and th those sorts of things. I can't imagine how that could be uh, done through conventional financing. And that was all out of state, John. I didn't find anyone in state doing it. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't keep the reference, so I apologize for that. I just, I guess I just have one more question at Tom's point, which is I, I'm still not quite understanding. It seemed like the, the BOE is pretty much done. Um, we will vote at second reading, um, you know, what the final numbers are. And that's what goes to the voters. Is that right? And if, if they get approved, then they, they adjust, you know, do they have to make all the adjustments before the, um, the, the second read? So I just want to make sure I understand that. I think it would certainly behoove the council if it could give early indication and give them time to adjust accordingly would be much very well received. Uh, they need in very short order after you take action in second reading to allocate the money across the 11 or 12 different spending categories and report that to DOE. So um, again, as I said, I, I think they'll need weeks to work through and rework some of these and different approaches. And I think that that is time I suspect they would very dearly appreciate if, if that can be afforded. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something out and again if it crashes and burn that's fine. But I'm I this is what I uh, just Councillor Johnson Paul Johnson I guess I should say um, this is what I would like to suggest. We're at about 1.2 percent the mill rate. I know how ugly it is to talk about it in terms of the mill rate. $100,000 is about 0.15 on the mill rate. So $100,000 is about 0.15. So I would suggest I'd be willing to contribute $100,000 to the additional ask 
and instruct the BOE that they have $465,000 to find in their budget. And we'll see you at second reading. And that's it. And we have second reading and it's all over. And Councilor Johnson and Councilor Hamill. Yeah, I just need clarity. I'm trying to follow the money. Because my understanding on the first read, there was 400 and something thousand in that first read for COVID. So, correct. Is that true? Yeah, it was. Okay, I saw somebody shaking their head. I didn't want to go down that road if that was incorrect. Yeah. So, what no, happened, and again, I'm, I'm just trying to follow the money, is that money was pulled out, put in a separate bucket, and backfilled with something. We're, and I, I think. I think the BOE is going to come back on. I think you mentioned maybe they could. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to finish the conversation. I don't want to just. I do have BOE members that want to get in. I just didn't. I'm a little confused on. I'm trying to keep this conversation to us because I think it needs to happen. Okay. So obviously, I want them to come in. I just every time we put more than seven of us in here, we lose our way, and I think it's important. Okay. I'm trying to don't work. Let me, don't let me follow up then. Yeah. The again, the hundred thousand dollars. Why would we fund a design when we don't know what we're designing? I'm sorry, my hundred. I, I I misspoke. What I was trying to say for the purposes of money, second reading, mill rate, everything. I'm viewing this. The BOE is asking us for five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It says clearly on their slide that they're asking for five hundred fifty thousand dollars in additional funding. What I am suggesting is that we give them $100,000 of that, which would up the mill projected mill rate to approximately 1.35 and tell them if you need to go fund 450 that you're asking for, you need to go find it. That, that you find it through your staff concessions, you find it through positions, you find it through programs, but our conversation's done at second reading, that's where we're at. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to move the ball forward, so to speak. Um, Council Hamill and Tom, or Tom, I guess, first. And yeah, just very quickly, just keep in mind, council's prerogative is sizing the bottom line, how much they can spend. How they spend it is the BOE's prerogative. Uh, they've laid out and told you what their expectations are and what their challenges are. Uh, but what they're desperately asking for is tell us what our budget is and we'll, we'll do our best to prioritize within those challenges and, and fund them. And I, my simple plea to you is the more time you give them to do that work thoughtfully, strategically with partnerships, um, the better. Councilor Hamill, then if there's nobody else, Alicia and Sarah, I'm gonna bring you in. Councilor Hamill, did you have something to say before I bring in? I thought it was cleaner before you uh, anteed 100K. I mean, it was the one, the 1.16% 1 was where we, where we are, uh, uh, or uh, where we were on June 9th. Um, and that's the number before we got the COVID two-step. Um, so I, you know, I, that number, you know, uh, seems reasonable to me, but again, I'm, I'm gonna be on the lower side anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that, Pat, and if we're telling him that plus, uh, you know, um, we've already told him, we, you know, if we say on that number, we don't have to ask him for anything else. It's, or are we? I mean, that's the point. Every time we ask him for something else, we get, you know, taken out of the budget, we get something built back in. So I just, I think we really just need to be precise on that. Um, but that was, I just wanted to react to your. You yep. Know. Yep, that's fair. Thanks. Any, uh, Councilor Hayes. Yeah, Paul. I mean, I think it's a great suggestion. I don't know if you want to just go around and just a real short polling of just. You know, is it 1.16 or 1.35? Was that your number that you? I, yeah, I think it'd be 1.31. Yep. Just, I mean, I would suggest maybe just seeing where the consensus is, and that that would be okay. The yeah, line the sand, if you will. So I'll st I'll frame what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, the school is asking for an additional funding of five hundred fifty thousand dollars. I suggest that we 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 partially fund that request with a hundred thousand and and put the onus on them for the for the rest the four hundred sixty five. That's what I would suggest for direction coming out of this meeting. I would I would split it, but that because that's me, I'd make it two fifty, um, and then come up with two fifty. But I think you know that we need to give them something. Yeah. Councilor uh, Hamill. So we've got three numbers now: one point one six, one point three five, and whatever you know the higher right. number from Jean Marie. 
So I think we're going to have a hard time getting um, <laughs> consensus around uh, all three of those. So. Yeah. So how about my idea first and we'll shoot that up or down and then we'll go to or not. I mean, if people aren't comfortable doing that, that's completely fine. So well, I'm not it did, just to maybe restate that, I think it's the same point, but it, essentially adding in $100,000 to their operating budget. That's all I'm doing. The effective, and, find the, and find the rest. Yeah. The effective, which at this point would produce uh, expected mill rate increase of 1.35%. Yeah. Peter? Well, I think, I think, so I think, are there two options we're going to vote on or just one option? I mean, well, it, it, yeah, it, I mean, we don't even is, have to. If, I don't, I don't. Well, I think it's important to do okay. it, but I just. Yeah, I would say to, to if we want to throw the, the, let's say, this is why I was trying to frame it in COVID. I, the, my, this is why it's easier. Like, is the COVID all their responsibility? Do we want to, do we want to take on a hundred thousand of that responsibility? Okay. Or so maybe that's a simple answer. Yeah, COVID yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yep. That's all we should say as you go around the world. Yes, right. So to me, is the COVID a hundred percent the BOE's budget responsibility? Are we willing to contribute X amount of dollars to it? Jean Marie has suggested we split it. I've suggested we contribute a hundred thousand. And when I say I, we, I, it's just increasing their operating budget by a hundred thousand. That's go ahead, Peter. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm at non COVID staying at the 1.16%. Perfect. Good. We at least got somebody on there. <laughs> Good. Mr. Hamill. I second that. I'm on that too. All right. There's two. Okay. Councillor Johnson. Uh, I third that because I fully, uh, I, I feel comfortable that the 1.2 billion, which is allocated for COVID related expense, it's just hung up in red tape on how to give it. Our schools are gonna get what they need. So I, I go with the uh, Peter and Mr. Hamill. Okay, good. Uh, Councilor Clucci. So uh, what we're responding to is, are we okay with the budget outside of COVID? And then is there going to be a future discussion about what we do about COVID or is this just going to, uh, we're saying we're good, BOE, you got to go figure out COVID. I think, I think three counselors just said, BOE, you have to go figure it out. Yep. Okay. I, I, I'm not quite there. I, I, I would be more in the, the 100 to splitting it with them. And, and, and what I'm looking at is, it, to Betsy's point earlier, th their gross budget is going up 4.5%. That's, that's a big number, but their enrollment is going up too. So they're going to be servicing more students next year. And I just think um, that we have to account for that somehow. And when you take out another 500,000 there, you know, it, it gets that brings that 4.4% closer to 1.8. That's given the situation that's tough to um, be successful with. So. So what, what, what is your vote, John? <laughs> My vote for the uh, BOA you're all on your own. I can't support that. Okay. So you're, you're whatever is non BOE you're on your own. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Gleistein. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, so I'm sorry, I'm always asking a question instead of answering the question. So John, you just said, so the non-COVID tax, okay, so they'd have to be reduced by another 552. Okay, so you say that's a, like a 1.8% increase if we do the COVID? Per student. So if you factor in enrollment growth, um, it's a 1.8% it's a increase per student. Okay. It also happens to be a 1.8% increase on their uh, net operating budget. Co coincidentally. Right. Um, well, I'm, I'm for the 100K. Okay. Councilor Katarina? Um, I, I just want to remind people that the most important things about schools are the students and the teachers. Um, so I don't want to do anything that's going to upset that apple cart in any way. Um, but if everyone wants to go with 100, I would do it, but there's no way I would say I'm not funding anything. I want to contribute something to COVID. So there's four of us that would fund or going to fund it, so to speak. And I'll fund a portion. I portion. Think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to overstate it. Right. And I guess I'm going to go back to Jean Marie and John. I mean, I'm at, I'm at a I'm because just because you guys didn't necessarily say a hundred, so I just don't want to. John, 
John, can I ask you to talk about you and I were playing with some numbers earlier and you had said net decrease get to 1.5 was three something. I'm trying to find my notes. So that is what I said. And uh, yeah, I had 323. Uh, so uh, I think what I came back to is a 1.15% mill rate increase gets you to a mill rate of 14.92. And that based on our mid-range valuation estimate, um, that gets you to a net appropriation of 70 million, 222,757, which is a uh, $323,000 plus or minus difference from where we are now. So, so just uh, comparatively, instead of adding 100 to their, appropriate, their uh, operating budget, adding 323. Well, well, this might be easy. Betsy, you're not budget higher than the 100, right? Well, I, you know, I, <laughs> because if you're not, it's very <laughs> difficult for me. I'm, you know, I, you know, the, the increase, um, you know, in the way that it's been framed, I mean, I, I, I where my discomfort is coming is calling it paying for COVID. You know, right. I, I just, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with that. Um, so I, I, you know, but we also said it was the right thing to do for him to carve it out that way. So it's a tough, you know, I know it's tough. Well, to it's good. It's good to look at it that way because of reimbursements and things like that. Um, it's, yeah. it's a good, it's a good way to look at it. Um, it just feels like there's still things that maybe, you know, um, with the capital, you know, the capital ask, um, I haven't been able to look at the detail and, you know, that's their ask. So, and I haven't been able to go back through the tiers of, of what got added back in. Um, so, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's just a very tough call. I would definitely not be anywhere more than a hundred. Uh, so we're at, so with, without the hundred, we're at what? 1.16. Yeah. 1.16. Yeah. And with the hundred, we're at 1.35. That's my, you know, that's my phone calculation, you know, but okay. I'm pretty confident with it. And this is, um, this is to give them a target. And then there's still more discussion after this, or can you explain that process to me? I mean, I mean, my my thought would be we don't have to talk to them again. I think that's kind of the point. You know, they have their number at this point, and we'll see at second reading. Uh, unless you know, of course, like every everybody's acknowledged, unless something happens and we ha you know we have a massive drop in revenue or the or the 1.2 billions released magically or you know what have you. But I guess what I'm trying to do is to give them the direction and, and tell them we'll see them in three weeks. That's all. So, so then we're more or less, so even though after today we, we are able to go through and kind of understand a little bit more, what we're saying is the number that we give them today is the number that they're going to see at second read. That's what we're being encouraged to do. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're a body and we're human and there's other things involved. So I don't want to say that with absolute, but I do think it's, I think it's important that they know ex as close to as accurately as possible of, of where we are. Right. Yeah. So I guess with that, it's easier to go up than it is to go down. So um, I guess with that, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm saying uh, the budget without the, I don't like framing it that way, but but the budget that's a 3.3% 3 .3 increase, um, which is framed without the, the 552, I guess that's the budget I'm the most comfortable with, with the 100% or whatever capital appropriation increase. And, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, quite frankly, I'll just put it out there. I don't know what that, you know, that I might come back second read and say, nope, I've looked at it, I've gone through the numbers. I think there ought to be more in that. So. But I guess I guess I'm I'm sorry I'm flipping your uh, flipping your count, but um, it's it's difficult. It's harder to go. It's harder to go. It's easier to go up than to go down. And since we're kind of saying this is the number that we're going to come forward with at second read, I I guess that uh, changes my comfort level with it. I guess the only thing I'd push back is I I feel like in the environment that we're in, it seems to be a heck of a lot easier to go down than go up. So I I I will be I'll be surprised if anything's going up. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that would be my only thing. I, I think that we might be, I don't know if that's a hundred percent. I I can't think of the scenario that we would, that we would go up, but I hope I'm wrong. I, I mean, I do. I just. So you um, think the second read, it would be more likely to go down. 
No, I guess what I'm saying is it's, you know, if we task them with, with finding the 550 and they find it, in what universe are we going up after that? We're not. I mean, that's, they, they are going to do the task we give them, right? So if we task them to go find the 550, they're going to find it. They have to. And then there's no universe at which we go up. Well, unless there's a catastrophic event. I mean, there's- and Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There could be shortfall of funding all of a sudden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, uh, Tom and then Don. Sorry, guys. Just, just a question. A number of you have mentioned uh, potential opportunity to look back at capital. Is there any, any appetite to the extent that they modify their capital request that those monies, some or all, could go toward operating? Well, that's what they're doing now. I mean, I, I just think that sort of guidance could be very helpful as they look to piece their way together, piece this together uh, and, and set their priorities. I mean, I feel like we've been pretty clear that they, you know, we're taking most of their recommendations for what they shift from capital away from capital into operating if they have to. I mean, I mean, I think Peter has referenced a few times and Betsy clearly has that it's tough for her to to contribute the 100,000, so to speak, when she sees a CIP that's increased by 100,000. So I think everybody is specifically been targeting the capital budget as room to room to wiggle, so to speak. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Every, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I feel like we've all been comfortable in doing that. But, but, but Tom, is your question to move something that's an appropriation to bonding? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. The, the question on the table was potentially giving them $100,000 more in their operating budget, but in the, and going back to work to figure out how they're going to prioritize and how to fund, to fund the things that they think they need to at the levels they need to. In the course of that evaluation, I, I hope they look back at capital and to the extent yeah. that they derive savings from there, is right. there an appetite of applying those savings toward their operating? Yeah, I mean, that's what we've done through okay. the different phases, so yes. I just want to be clear. Okay, Betsy, I'm going to say that there is a consensus to tell the BOE that they, by second, the 550, 556 is on them, so to speak. Can you quote that in um, mill rate, please? Nothing. It's not changed. It's what we have. It's 1.16. Okay, thank you. You got, yeah. Um, with that, I think I'm going to, so... What I'm hearing is the new target's 1.16, just so we're all clear. So let me say it again. The new target is 1.16 because effectively we've said we're happy with what the town's doing. We're unwilling to fund the school for their additional ask in any capacity. So everything has to be neutral from here on out. So we're at 1.16. Let me, I just wanna make sure we're all speaking the same language. and. If a revenue drops off between now and second reading, that means there needs to be a reduction in expenditures that balances that revenue up. Okay. Can I just go around? I, I see heads nodding, but since this is, <laughs> I just want to make sure that we, some heads look like they're cut, like just might fall off their, <laughs> their body. So I, uh, I'm going to start with Jean Marie and then to uh, Ken. What are you asking me? I'm hungry. Yep. Fair enough. <laughs> We are currently at, without the, the COVID expense, we're at 1.16. And effectively, yeah. the majority of the council just said the BOE needs to find that, that funding on their own. Well, I, I, I don't agree with that, but I will go along with the majority. Well, me either. The I mean, I don't agree with it either, but, but my point is what they're effectively saying is yes. that second read, right. the midline mill rate should be 1.16. I guess, yeah, if that's what the majority wants. Is that what you wanted to hear me say? Yeah, because I'm, I'm the only one talking, <laughs> so I want to make sure it's made as a body. That's all. <laughs> Councilor Johnson? I think he wanted to know if you were in support of that, right? No, I mean, I, no, I mean, I don't support it. I don't, I think we're overruled is what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm trying to frame this as where should we be at second reading? There's a lot of, there's a lot of tendency to say, wait, this isn't where we were, this, but all we're doing right now is saying we're happy with everything and we're not kicking in to, for the COVID. Yeah, I mean, but the majority of the council right now is saying this is what they want. So yeah. I, I support the majority of the council. I don't have any other choice okay. right now. Right. Mr. Johnson? I support that. Mr. Hamill? I support that. Mr. Hayes? 
is supported. Mr. Clucci. Um, I concede that that's the consensus of the council if we get four, but I do not support the concept. Right. Fair enough. On the, on the Ms. Gleistein. Begrudgingly, I support it. Okay. I too acknowledge that it's the consensus of the council. I do not support it. Okay, uh, with that, what is um, number four? I think effectively you've already done that. It was established updated town and school budget expectations. Okay, and we've, we've done that. Uh, with that, I'm going to take public comment and I'm going to go, Ms. Giftos, you are first. My guess is Sarah and Alicia might want some dialogue with us. So of course we can dialogue. Alicia, you are in. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, yep. Okay, great. So um, I've got three points that I'd like to address if that's okay with you. Um, I've heard Tom make his presentations and effectively, and he got to the point with his reductions where he said, you know, this is so far that I can't support, I can't support it. And I just found it really interesting how that, um, and, and by the way, I think that that was, you know, this place, you know, $100,000 towards the, the new schools, it's not going to get us any work. We are, you're putting money out every year for modulars. It's, it's inadequate space. It doesn't retain its value and it's going to keep occurring. We all know that we need to make this investment and you're either going to make it now or you're going to make it exponentially in the future. So I think that that's a mistake to wait. There's, there's not gonna be any getting out of that predicament. It needs to happen. And every day we wait, it's gonna cost more to the taxpayers and it's gonna put our kids in a worse position. So that's a mistake. And then third, to talk about not funding COVID is just, I, 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 it's laughable. I mean, the CDC is making recommendations. What, we're not gonna follow them? We're not going to send our kids to school. The town of Scarborough school system is going to shut down. We're going to we're going to lay off teachers and increase the class size, which is going to be contrary to the CDC recommendations. That doesn't make any sense to me. So you know, you might have come to some sort of consensus tonight. I'd like to suggest that it's completely backwards, and it it's it's untenable. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Uh, Miss Ash Cuthbert, you are up next. Hi, thank you for, um, I, I love having these on Zoom so many people can participate. Um, I am a fifth grade teacher at Wentworth. I also uh, represent the teachers of Scarborough as their um, association president. And I'm thinking back on a meeting that was several weeks ago where council member Katarina held up a sign, a kind of a hand drafted sign um, and said, this is what it's going to cost per household. Um, and then I kind of expanded on those numbers. So I hope I'm not off of what her original plan was, but if the mill rate uh, comes in at not increasing more than 1.5 on a $400,000 home, that's less than $10, $10. That's two trips to Starbucks in the course of a year. And that we're, that we're discussing, or when I say we're, I mean you, the council is discussing, well, 1.16 or 1.35. We're talking about two trips to Starbucks. That's that's just not worth what will be lost for the school budget. Um, and actually, even at 2%, members of the town would see a decrease in their um, taxes. So that's number one. Number two, I would absolutely support um, what our uh, board member Gifto said. Um, I am working at the national level and the state level for recommendations and following CDC recommendations in school. 
And I think the uh, 500,000 that Scarborough BOE has put forward is actually quite conservative. Um, I think it's gonna be higher than that. Um, and if that is not funded separately, that is gonna be a cut to the school budget. That's gonna be the cut that, that you've been asking for. Um, you're just getting it in a different way. Um, and I think that it's important to know that schools are going to be needing that money more now than ever before. Um, we're going to need more bus drivers. We're going to need more bus trips. We're going to need more people to manage the work that is expected um, and recommended for the safety of kids. Um, and third, uh, many council members have said, well, you know, we need to look at um, the educators and the concessions that they need to make in salary. And what's important to know, and I, I respect the uh, my union brothers and sisters on the town side, um, but that's really easy to say, but you're comparing apples to oranges. And what's important to know is towns that are at the same physical spot that Scarborough was in, it, the average teacher on the average pay scale is paid 6,000 more than Scarborough teachers. And even with those increases that were approved by the board uh, at the last meeting, that still puts us at the very bottom of our comparison pack. So to say, yep, let's cut that even more because someone else did, I don't think it's fair to compare apples to oranges. And literally um, someone can, instead of driving south, drive north and make 6,000 more. That That's, we're going to lose good teachers and we've already started. Um, so I would really ask you to reconsider um, your funding um, of who pays for COVID. And I, you know, I've been listening to every finance committee meeting, board meetings uh, since March now. And I guess in a position where I have to work with a lot of different people, I can never ever imagine saying to someone I have to work with, in no universe will we give them another penny. I think that is outrageous to say, that does not show collaboration or we don't ever have to talk to them again. Um, and those were comments that were made by members of this council tonight. And that is alarming if, if nothing else, um, that we can't come together for what's best in the kids of our town. Crystal, just to clarify, when I said no universe, I didn't mean I wanted to give it. I just meant the nature of this cutting. Uh, hey, is it since you're here, is it fair to say that you guys, you are unwilling to bring to your membership any sort of reduction in COLA? Um, I think that conversation is something that um, the negotiations team has to deal with. I'm not prepared to talk about that myself. Do I have your word that you will discuss it with your negotiation team? I'm not prepared to discuss that. And as I said earlier, Council Member um, Johnson, we are paid $6,000 less than someone who's doing the exact same job in a nearby town that has the same money coming in as Scarborough. So that's a, it, so I'm hearing that's a no, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it's a no, but I am, I am not in a position where I can make that, I can say that myself personally, sure. that's our negotiation, but I will be quite honest with you um, that the uh, teachers have, of Scarborough have worked very hard to be paid a fair and reasonable wage. And even with the increases that we're going to see, we are still far, far below our comparison groups. So if you're asking us to be even farther down, which is what I'm hearing you ask, can you be paid even less than what your counterparts in other towns are? That would definitely be a hard sell, but I'm not, I do not speak. Um, I do not make decisions in isolation. Right, but you, you do have the authority to gatekeep stuff. So I guess I'm just asking you yes. directly to at least entertain it amongst your membership because I think there's a path forward here if we do all figure out a spirit of collaboration. So, and so, I- I, I get the frustration and so but what I'm hearing what I'm hearing you say is Crystal would the educators of Scarborough be willing to be paid even less yes you're hearing me correct let me okay. I'll state it for you 
Okay. There still no, no. Are the educators of Scarborough willing to be paid even less? I am asking that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's a group decision. Yep. My, I just asked, me, I asked that you let the group make it. That's all. Me personally, me personally, I think that you even asking that is offensive to me. And I'm an educator of 25 years. Fair so enough. $6,000 is a lot to swallow. To, Fair enough. The pleasure of teaching in Scarborough. Did you want to ask Miss <laughs> Crystal? You're in the meeting now, Councillor Hayes. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, just just a couple of things I'd like to point out. One, and it really does get confusing, but a lot of people think that the education budget has an increase, and actually, what was the gross ask in last year in twenty was fifty one million point six. What we just talked about is a number of fifty three point one, so it's a one point seven million increase. And it's not that we're not funding COVID as was just stated, the COVID funding was in the original budget that we have talked about. So we had anticipated in the original budget we have talked about had the COVID funding, it's still in that budget. They just asked to carve it out and ask for an increase. So absolutely, we just went through that this evening. There is that money was in the budget that we reviewed at the first read. So that is still being funded with these numbers. Okay, thank you for clarifying, Council Member Hayes. Um, I specifically remember you going around and deciding if you wanna, out of the $465,000 ask, if, you, if it was 100,000 you wanted to give, if it was nothing that you wanted to, to do out of that. So my recollection, and I should have been clear is, the new ask. So the, the the straw poll was for the new ask. No, that's what 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 in actuality happened is they already had the, the four hundred and thirty thousand of COVID funding in the budget numbers we had reviewed. They were asking for an additional four hundred and thirty thousand dollars. They backfilled that. That's so the COVID is being funded at that level we've talked about. We may have used the wrong terminology. It wasn't we weren't funding it. We just weren't going to fund the additional ask they were asking for. And it wasn't for COVID. It's because they backfilled with other things. All right. Well, Crystal, thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, say Sarah Layton. Thanks, Paul. Can you guys yep. hear me? Yep, we can. Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, I, I just want to clarify one point because, and I don't have anything to add to what Alicia said because I think what she said was spot on. I think most of the board is in agreement with that, but it seems as though most people, and maybe I heard this wrong. Um, but are making the decision about the hundred thousand based off of the CIP. Um, the items that remain in CIP are scheduled to be bonded. You guys have the authority to change that, but those numbers reducing those items will not actually impact the goal that you are setting for us. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah I would, I mean, Kate sent around a schedule today that still shows about 700,000 of appropriated capital items that are still in the budget. So either those, those, those exhibits we got today are not correct, um, but there's still items on the thing like um, that are on there, upgrade security camera, no, that's not on there, but replaced passenger van appropriated 25,000. Amended budget 6420 still has the van on it. So there's there's a list that was distributed today that I, there's 700,000 of appropriated capital items that are still on the list as of the documents we got. Maybe the documents aren't correct, but those are the documents we have. Hey, Sarah, can I share my screen and we can work through this because I do think it's an important point. I, I did want to clarify, Sarah, that 100,000 I quote threw out there was to contribute towards your operating budget for the 556. So I was not, I was not referencing, I was not referencing your CIP. I was referencing your operating budget. But 
to Peter's point, this is what we're looking at. So I think if we can take this opportunity, Sarah, with you here and us looking, um, we're looking at, so if we just look at the top two lines here, this appears to be $74,000. Again, I'm not saying whether I'm, I'm just pointing this out. Here's an example of what Peter's saying, whoops, is these two items, that's, that's right there, that's an appropriated $74,000, right? Yeah, and if you go to the second tab, it explains why we kept things. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, which is not letting me, oh, because I'm still in that. Yeah, okay, so here's your explanation for the why you kept appropriated items, right? Yeah, and if you want to go through these line by line, we probably need to bring Kate in. Yeah, I don't think we do at this point. We're two and a half hours. Okay. Ahead, but I think what's, both points what's are the bottom line, Paul? Um, let me look. 618. Yeah, I thought it would have to be 618 because in the mill rate, we have 628. And I remember the towns was 10. So there's still $618,000 that's appropriate in your capital budget. Well, there's there's the capital improvement budget too. So there's equipment and improvements. Yeah. So when, when you add them all up, including the improvements, I, I calculated about 700. So whatever. I mean, it, but there's still, to get to Sarah's point, they are still functionally in the budget. There's, and it does affect the bottom line if they remain or if they, something's adjusted, then that, that directly impacts the bottom line. Yeah. And just to clear, when I was, when we were taking our straw poll, I was not talking about the CIP. I wasn't talking about the new school. I was talking about a hundred thousand directly to your COVID carve out in your presentation. That was. Um, Sarah, did you have anything else? I'm sorry. To... Nope. I think Alicia pretty much covered it all for the board. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Ms. Lionheart, you are up next. Thank you, Stephanie Lionheart to Riverwoods Drive. Uh, listening to the town council meeting today, I continue to hear councillors praising some Scarborough Union employees for modifying their collective bargaining contracts in order to delay their cost of living raises for six months. I agree that this action is admirable and I have the utmost respect for our first responders. However, what continues to not be shared is that those same employees received other concessions in return for delaying their raises six months. This fact does not diminish the amazing work our police officers and safety dispatchers do, but I think it's important information as these two unions are being painted in a light as martyrs, while others are being painted by the council as greedy villains. There continue to be calls by the councillors for other bargaining units in Scarborough, aka the teachers, to reopen their contract that was just finalized after an 18-month negotiation battle. The teachers union continues to be referenced over and over both by name and by inference as a group who should be making concessions. What is critical to know is that Scarborough teachers already started making concessions months ago. For those who are unaware, contract negotiations between the Board of Education and the Teachers Association started in January 2018 and lasted 18 months. The negotiations failed in mediation and went to fact finding. The majority fact-finding report recommended a uh, minority fact-finding report recommended a 19% pay increase over a three-year period just to get Scarborough's teachers to the middle of the salary range compared to similar districts. The majority report from the fact-finding panel recommended 11.99% pay increase over three years for Scarborough's teachers. While Scarborough's teachers would love a 19% raise over three years or even an 11.9% raise during that same time, they recognized, given the times, that would not be rational. So in March, they accepted the board's best offer contract. The majority of Scarborough SCA faculty members, 97.5% approved that contract. It's important to note, members of the faculty contract are not receiving any perks in exchange for their concession to take a smaller pay increase, which will still leave them at the bottom of the salary range compared to comparable districts. The fact is the teachers of Scarborough worked for a year without a contract, including working harder than ever to provide distance learning without a contract in place. 
It's time for the town council and the citizens of Scarborough to acknowledge that the teachers of Scarborough made concessions long before any other bargaining unit by working a year without a contract and by ratifying a contract with a salary scale that will continue to put them at the bottom compared to their cohorts. Last week, there was a public commenter who said, we can pass the budget the hard way or the easy way with the implication that the easy way is a 0% mill rate increase. As a taxpayer and school employee, I emphatically disagree. And I believe that 3,021 students in Scarborough Public Schools would also disagree. A one to 2% mill rate increase will still result in a tax decrease for some and a slight tax increase for the rest. It is well known that a thriving school system is critical to higher property values. Scarborough is currently a top-notch institution as evidenced by its top five niche ranking among public high schools in Maine. The town of Scarborough needs a one to 2% mill rate increase in order to avoid the devastating impact potential cuts to our schools would have, both on our children's education and on taxpayers' property values. Please stop asking the Board of Education to make cuts that are going to devalue Scarborough schools and negatively affect taxpayers' property values. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Tom, could you just, just, and this is not some sort of, I'm not trying to do a rebuttal. I am, I am, she raises, I do believe with the unions that made their concession, correct? They had a budget neutral mechanism that did give them additional time off if they were the seventh man or the one that's overstaffed. Um, I, we have non-union employees that did not research. I, I just, there's a narrative that we gave perks to people that made concessions, which I is true. That is true. There are two unions that have received perks to make concessions. Are there other units in town that have made concessions that have, that have, go, that have not gotten perks? No, for all non-union employees, we've simply, we've removed co uh, any cost of living increase for the entire fiscal year. So it's not just a half year. What you refer to are two existing contracts that was for police and fire. I would characterize these as totally voluntary concessions. They are under contract. We're due to receive their cost of living increases and all other benefits effective uh, July 1st. And through a series of discussions, uh, we were able to garner some wage concessions. In return, well, we did provide some compensatory time. Uh, as you say, it is budget neutral, and that's certainly a big reason that we uh, agreed to that. But uh, these things are negotiations. They, they're called negotiations for a reason. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I'm, I'm very pleased, I, I hope, that no one thought we were trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. Uh, that was clearly always part of the deal for those two unions. Uh, but for everyone else, uh, we have, um, not gleefully, but we have, uh, I think, quickly stepped up to the plate and recognized that we need to do our part and have done so on the non-union side. And so I, I would just like the conversation to continue beyond the SEA. I think there are other units, there are other employees in the district that could uh, also consider um, helping the effort. Tom, has your, has your entire senior staff taken non-COLA? Have you guys froze your COLA as well? I know you have, or, or you, yes. you, yes. you had a bonus that we didn't consider, but. Oh, uh, my proposed budget did not include any COLA for any non-union staff, uh, myself. Your, okay, staff. so that includes your staff. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got confused, sorry. Uh, Councilor Gleistein? Yeah, and, um, you know, uh, Paul, you know, kind of, you know, to Tom's point there, I had been looking at, at some of those numbers and, and I, I totally agree about, you know, just the teachers, um, you know, because that's just one piece of the pie. Um, and, and I could be reading this wrong, but I'm, I'm a citizen, I'm a resident. I've, you know, tried to look at things to understand, you know, and I know I have a special position to vote on the bottom line, but, um, you know, when I looked at tier four, you know, I see, you know, athletic and activities um, salary increases of almost 4%, um, facilities maintenance of almost 3.5%, um, school administration of um, like 2.6%, um, system administration of 7.98%. And there's probably explanations for a lot of that, but, you know, I think that's where some folks are at out there. So I'm trying to, you know, speak with that voice of, um, you know, certainly not picking on the teachers. And it's been, it is, you know, I would never call anyone greedy. So that's been said many times. I think, you know, what we're asking is, you know, is there a way to maintain the programming and um, share in the sacrifice 
uh, not cut positions, et cetera. Um, it just seems like you know uh, there might be a way um, for everyone to uh, do what they've done on the town side. And uh, as Tom said, it's called negotiations for a reason. Um, I know the SEA, they just got there. So I, I don't know about them. I, I won't speak to that, but um, I, I, I hope that folks sit down with the, the, those on the BOE about this issue. Okay, uh, Ms. Sider, I believe you got the last word because I think you're the last one. Is that Cole? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so I apologize because A, I, I definitely do not thrive um, in this format and B, a lot, so much has been said and it's hard to kind of nail down exactly what I would like to speak to and, and Paul saying I have the last word put a lot of pressure on me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we were, there, there are so many things going on here between the town council and the board um, that the public is watching. And I'm really concerned because the relationships that were developed, um, you know, you we were asked to reduce our budget because the impact that COVID is having on our community. And, and we did that. We reduced our budget by $2 million in order to respond to that impact. Now we're asking for additional funds. It's not sneaky. There's nothing sneaky about it. We separated the reduction that we made to our budget from the needs that we are going to have as a result of COVID. It's not fair to ask us to result to reduce the overall mill rate because of COVID and then to call the schools out for asking for funding to pay for our COVID expenses. This board has kicked every rock and turned over every stone. Yes, there are things in the capital budget that we can go back and look at, but the tone of the council, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but the tone of the council sounds accusatory. It feels harsh as if we have somehow failed you or failed to do our jobs. And I think that I would urge counselors to please understand that the, the reductions that we have made to our operating budget and to our existing CIP budget are going to hurt our students. And our job as BOE members is to protect those students. And so the tone, the tone is harsh. And we are all trying to arrive at something that is going to be a response to the situation that we are in. But I think that the town council has lost their way a little bit because you're responding to those that are seeking a 0% mill rate increase and it's going to be to the detriment of our schools. And this is not a game. There's not a single person on this board that is putting forth teacher positions or unnecessary cuts to try and rile up the community. We have done what we can to minimize the impact. And I am asking the, tone, the town council at this point to please consider your tone because it's not good. It's not healthy for those of us on the board and it's certainly not healthy for our community. Thank you, April. You don't get the last word. There is somebody else. Good. <laughs> It was a good last word if it was the last word. I apologize. Uh, Ms. Pettit, you are up, or Mr. Pettit, I don't really know, I apologize. Yeah, it's Andrea Pettit, Two Crossing Drive. Um, sorry to take the last word, but I wanna say with, and I don't understand all the rules of how this works, but with having heard from the town, is there an opportunity to go back and ask of the board if they wanna, that vote that you put, and I know it wasn't a real vote, but that, that discussion of saying, yes, we support um, going, saying that we'll provide some money to the COVID and I know it's not the COVID bucket, but, or no, I don't. Is there an opportunity to ask that question again now that you've heard the town? Yeah, I, I think that, yes. I think we haven't, this is not official action, you know, so right. 
we're trying to get clarity. Clearly it's messy and ugly and it's, you know, nobody's making any friends. Um, but yeah, the second reading is when our next action is to actually adjust the budget off first reading. Um, so there's that. So if you're asking is, you know, is this the end all? No, it's not an official vote. Was it a pretty clear consensus? It was, but can you lobby and, and put pressure on any one of us to, to reconsider? Absolutely. That's, I encourage you to do so if you feel like that's what, you know, if that's your right, you should. Uh, so, yeah. I appreciate the education. Thank you. Did that, I hope that made, I hope that answered that. I apologize. It helps. Yeah. Okay. And we have another one. Miss Rowan, you are up in a couple seconds. Hi, can you hear me? Erin, I'm just going to turn your video off because it's our, it's our, uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to um, voice my support for the comments made by Ms. Giftos, um, Ms. Scyther, Ms. Layton, and Ms. Leonhart. Um, I think that their words were very powerful, and I know it's hard to, to, um, have these kinds of conversations with colleagues. And I just really admire the strength with which they made their cases. Um, I would like to say to them that I don't think it's at all personal. I think that I, when I say that, I mean, I don't think that the comments coming from counselors who would like to see the school budget lower, I don't think those are, are intended to be personal comments. I think that those comments come from um, longstanding philosophical beliefs that public schools are overfunded, that their budgets are bloated, and that we're trying to somehow pull the wool over the eyes of taxpayers. Um, so, so I hope that all of you who may fall in that camp of, of people who share that philosophy really listened. I'm, I'm, I would encourage you to digest everything that those, um, the board members and, um, I didn't mention Ms. Ash Cuthbert, but also what she said. Um, they're giving you the reality of the current situation. They're they're not. This is this is real stuff that's going to affect real kids. So those of you who are saying we want you to do more cuts, but we don't want to hurt the kids, it's not going to happen. If you, they are saying, if you ask us to make these cuts the students will be hurt. And so as you make these decisions, please stop saying you, you're, you think it's not gonna hurt the kids. It is. So you have to be comfortable with that. If you feel like students in Scarborough deserve to shoulder this burden at this very crazy time, as you've said, then say that. But don't say, we don't believe that the kids really need all of this we think you're making that up. I, I would never want to hurt the kids. That is not, those two ideas don't belong together. If you do it, the kids will be hurt. And if you're okay with that, then own it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, uh, these are like this. And I think that will be the official last word. Nope, it is not. Miss Steele, you are up. Hi, can you hear me? We can, yep. Yeah. Okay, my name is uh, Jessica Steele and I am the principal at Pleasant Hill School. Um, I did not know that we had permission to speak, but was um, was granted that. So I appreciate you taking taking me as the last word. Um, I, I just, I assume that all of you are parents or that you have a small child in your life. Um, the work that our leadership council has done, the work that the town council has done, the work that our school board has done has been with full heart. And I appreciate everything that you guys are doing to support the town. What our job is in the school community is to support children. What is being asked of our school department across time throughout throughout the history of public funding of education is to do more with less. What you are asking us to do yet again is to do more during a global pandemic 
with even less. This is about the health and safety and well-being of children. And I would challenge any adult on any of these, in any of these groups to look at a child and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you because I don't have the money. We have the money. We can figure this out and we can support kids. It is not okay to look at any child and say, you don't deserve our support. You don't deserve this money. And that is what, that is the tone, just like what April said, that is the tone that we are hearing from our town council to our school department. It is heartbreaking. It is soul crushing. And I cannot in good faith, look at my parent community, look at my teachers or look at any of my students ages five, six, and seven and tell them, I'm sorry, sweetie, I can't help you because we don't have the resources to support you. That is not okay. And that is not what a strong community does. I beg you, beg you to help us figure out how we can do this to support our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I'm gonna just, anybody else? Okay. Uh, with that, first of all, I appreciate everybody's comments. Those are very helpful and um, we still have some process ahead of us and I hope that everybody keeps an open mind and we will forge forward. Uh, with that, I am prepared to adjourn without objection. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.